Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP B&B &B for the premiere of Survivor 41. If you hear those sirens in the background, that's not Dr. Joe. That's the B&B &B coming for you as we're covering another season of Survivor, a two-hour double boot, three-day <laughs> travaganza. It was dangerous. No rice, no flint, but plenty of podcasts coming your way, including this one. Uh, let me first welcome in my final two partner, always on the B&B, &B, the co-owner here, Liana Boris. Liana, how are you? Doing fabulous, trying to come up with my own little song that I can hum while we're doing the podcast. Hmm. Is it, is, I would say, is it just the B&B the B &B theme song? Yes, that's always stuck in my head. So I think that's probably a good shout. A little bit more uh complicated for the survivor producers to come up with their own version of the song which i'm obsessed with shan's anthem but you know what uh, we already have our own so why mess with greatness i really like to hope that after the show after it filmed they're like okay Shan, we're gonna air this clip like can we get you in the studio for a second to do some adr like we'll mix in a nice beat i'll get yeah. i don't know diddy or we whoever need in there Okay. Yeah. Uh, we need the backing track, you know, the, the harmonies, right. We really got to like make this a full production. Okay. We're going uh, full symphony here. Yeah. Let's go full pizza song on this. Uh, and I bring up a big brother reference because we have two big brother stalwarts. You have heard them throughout the years podcasting about big brother, as well as a little bit of survivor as well. And we figured, you know what? It was a two hour episode, double boots. Let's bring in double the amount of guests. It's a new era of big brother. That's right. I'm talking to you out there. We missed you. We're happy to have you. And I'm very happy to have these two guests as well. They're talking about other types of islands on reality TV or hap ups. Uh, these guys face temptations in this first episode. They talk about a very different type of temptation island, but I'm so happy to welcome back to the B&B, &B, the great Kirsten McInnes and Maggie Morgan. How are you two doing? Hi. Well, I'm so excited uh, that you enjoy you invited me to join the party. I was a, a last minute addition. Well, not last minute, but I was. I'm so pumped up. too. Yeah, they're like, did Maggie talk to you about the BMB? And I was like, what? <laughs> no. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't know that was my. Oh no, I we didn't talk about this pre, oh, pre recording. Is this a live I, podcast now, or are we gonna start standing up and? That's right. To it's a live tribal. Yeah. I'm voting Maggie. Out. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. We're oh gonna, shoot. No, I definitely messed that up. If it was my job to text you, Kirsten, I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, it's no, there's obviously not a problem. I just am being messy. It's who I am. We're gonna live invite people, like change things on the fly to the podcast. Be like, no, Let's they're not. Yes, we want. Let's get Brad. I just decided to roll a dice. You know, a die. Roll no, the dice. No, I mean you didn't. You just put it in a separate apparatus and kept it in your pocket. You didn't necessarily roll it. <sighs> yeah, mm. I can't get over that. I was kind of expecting it to be like Yahtzee, where you put the dye in the oh, jar no, the and then tribe. you shake it up and then you yeah. like roll it out, you know? Like, yeah. Well, did you see that the little like pyramid type thing is very similar to like a dice rolling apparatus from oh. an actual board game? I, didn't I feel know like the like little poppy thing. Oh, oh, no, but it's not like... not that one. But that one would be really fun if they had yeah, little like a, from yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah, that would be the best. But I guess the way it works is you like load the dice in, and then you shake it up, and then you like put it down and like press a button and like lift it up, and then the the die is on the bottom. Something like that. I saw a post about it in the patron mm -hmm. Facebook group. Interesting. Huh. I don't. I don't know if you need to shake the dice and press the button. I feel like you could do one or the well, other. The shaking is so that you feel some agency over it. I feel like the true like next mm -hmm. level. But you don't shake it at all because you're like, what happens is meant to happen. Let's see what it is. But if you kiss it, that is agency, right? Yes. Because like, if you I mean, kiss if you kiss dye, anything, that's agency. That's. Well, well, I should hope so. <laughs> Can, well, no, that there was a big <laughs> argument though back in season forty, right when the fifty-fifty coin was introduced, of like, does Jeff flip it? Otherwise, like, yeah. you could skew the coin toss. Do you think if if it was a die concept, Maggie? Do you think Jeff would roll the die? Do you think he might weigh it a little bit depending on the person? I I don't know. I mean, maybe the thing is a die roll, I feel like is more difficult to maneuver than like a coin flip. It's weighted. But I always think I always think these coin flips that we see, like they probably are actually literally weighted. Like there's no way that the one that we saw on Big Brother this past season to, you know, overthrow the HOH, there's no way that wasn't weighted so that the overthrow would happen. Like what a main twist it would be if it didn't happen. Maggie, that, Am I was conspiracy the, theorist? that was the coin of destiny. We had a whole <laughs> apparatus to flip it. What are you mm -hmm. talking about? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe okay. maybe that's it. They would get an apparatus or something for the die roll. 
Okay, well, so this is for the shot in the dark advantage, right? Okay, so mm-hmm. shot in the dark, you got your dye, you put it in the dye thing jar, and then you just pick, this is how it actually works, right? And then you just pick a piece of paper out of another jar. You, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's heard, a yeah. sack of slips in the corner. Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 like what, like Santa's like, yeah, it's magical like Santa sack Jeff of presents? Yeah, Santa Jeff is coming in with a big old sack of slips. Uh, and so you just reach in and you pick one out. And it either says safe or I guess it's blank. And that means that no matter what, I think you still wager your vote. Like once you put that die in the little apparatus, you have lost your vote no matter what. It's just a matter of if it ends up turning out to be a successful gamble for you or not. It's like the most intense version of that game salad bowl that you have to play at parties ever. No, salad you don't know what I'm talking bowl. about. Fish bowl. It's called salad bowl, fish bowl. You like write down like little things like things and you have to pick it out and okay oh, now i am like celebrity or i like thought maggie yeah yeah it, a lot of different names for it but salad like you know I, said, I there's like salad three different rounds finger. and like the first round you act it out and then the second anyways yeah yeah, yeah. no Sorry. you make you said like that game you have to play at parties <laughs> have you been forced to play salad i went to theater school Okay, like uh, yeah. we can't just go to parties and like sit around and talk. Like there always has to be an activity. In, oh, I mean, in absolutely. Some way. I can say firsthand as someone who also went to you know theater school. Essentially, every gathering is like the Act One finale of Rent when they do La Vie Bohème <laughs> at the restaurant. Like that's <laughs> what every gathering is of like. All yes. right, what show are we doing tonight, folks? <laughs> and and you have to dress in a costume. There was no party in college that was not themed in some possible way. Even if it was like we're all wearing black tonight. Like it. it just just was there's no like the group activities at these theater parties were very very intense and taken seriously when so I that was in being college said, the theme was binge drinking well <laughs> we I, did that I mean, too that that's always a good theme unlike survivor has no themes uh mm-hmm. not run by no theater theme. kids evidently but we did have the opening two hours of season 41. A lot of positive reception, uh, myself included. I, I really liked the episode, but I'd love to go around before we get you know, into any more stuff, uh, before we reach into it, our own little sack of slips of games and get everyone's thoughts about you know, the, the introduction to this brand new era of Survivor. Kirsten, what'd you think about the premiere? I thought it was really fun. Like, uh, it's been so long since we had new Survivor, and I didn't really know how I was going to feel about it. Like, I I wasn't sure. Oh, am I still going to enjoy it? Like, do I, maybe I don't like Survivor. I don't know. Like, maybe I, my life has changed. I don't know. But I just had so much fun. Uh, I feel like it it went fast and slow. Like, all I looked down and I was like, oh my god, it's. Well, it's like 6.45. The show's almost yeah. over because I'm on no, Pacific time. But like, it was, it was weird because Tribal Council and the challenge were like in the back half of the episode. Yeah. So like it, 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 it was an interesting plotting out. It, yeah, it was it was funny. And then like I would just I was just vibing, watch, enjoying the show. And then you like look at Survivor Twitter and people were like, oh, remember when we all made the same joke like five minutes ago? And I was like, I missed it when we all made the same joke because I was just enjoying the show. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that was the joke, ironically enough, about JD flashing back to the day before. Yeah, so, did like, you know he made fire to... on day one of Survivor? <laughs> flashback to the flashback, <laughs> jokes on top of jokes. Uh, I Liana, mean... what, did you, what did you think about the premiere? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I also really enjoyed it. I think it was just so nice to have Survivor back, it, you know, and, and to see Jeff open with that beautiful monologue. But I, I felt that the... The changes in the cinematography and the inclusion of the shots of people in their everyday life, bringing that back, that I really, really liked. Being able to see the crew as a whole, Jeff pointing at me, being like, is that me? Is Jeff talking to me? And I knew that he teased that that was going to happen. But wow, I just felt so included in the show and I got to solve a puzzle. It was just a grand old time for me. Yeah, unlike Sarah and Shan, you're able to solve a puzzle successfully. Uh, I loved when they <laughs> called us a young survivors in that tweet. I know. I was like, <laughs> I am a young future survivor player. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's tough though because we are they, we are seeing three 20 year olds on the show. So it's one of those things of like, I simultaneously feel old, but then you call me young. So now <sighs> all is right with the world, Jeffrey. It's like, oh God, they're 10 years like, oh, like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, there, well, there's, a, there's a clip online and even like, you know, how you have JT being like, oh, I remember as a kid growing up with woo and it's like 
who was on six years ago. <laughs> you know, growing up. <laughs> yeah, when he was 14. I know. That's it's just weird to think of. Like, I I'm not disagreeing with like the the chron the uh, chronology of things. I just think it's interesting of like, yeah, this is seminal age for him because he's 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, does it do you feel like you go into like a vortex or you're like, I'm not okay. Everyone is so young. No, because Jeff called me young, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, they said well, because only young survivors can solve the puzzle. Yeah. It's not for olds oh and it only took me a couple tries to solve the puzzles so mm. it took me longer than i'd care to admit that i re that it was that lions like was the second half of oh, lions like yes. it took me that was the part that stumped me a little bit but i got there i did get well there. it was the game within the game that was the rebus puzzle and then once you solve the rebus puzzle on the game within the game website which is what, like Survivor something GWG yeah, like or whatever? I think it's like SurvivorGog.com. Yeah. Uh, then Gog. there's a little rearrange the letters puzzle, which the letters were OTEV. So I said Vito because <laughs> that's what OTEV is. That's got to be a backwards. <laughs> that's got to be a troll job, right? On CBS. Mm, I part think of so. Like, we we know how many Big Brother fans are, are paying yeah, attention. Here. It came up as incorrect, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was so mad, and I was like, "I did." I was like, "What, what could it even be?" Oh, it's vote. It's vote. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're an idiot, Leona. It's fine. No, stop it. You are not an idiot. You are from science. You're yeah. a young Survivor <laughs> fan. Young Survivor fans are not idiots. Yeah. Absolutely. Take Maggie, what did you think of the premiere? Yeah, so I am a filthy Survivor casual. Like, I, I know I've watched, like, 31 out of the 40 seasons, but I still feel like such a casual. Um, so I waited until the next day because my roommate has gotten really, really into Survivor in the past year, and he couldn't watch it with me the night of the premiere. So we waited until the morning. He woke up two hours before I did and waited for me to wake up like a kid on Christmas Aww. so we could watch Survivor oh, together, so literally. That sack of slips under That's the tree. Really Absolutely. And um, I had such a great time. You know, he had like really gone in depth. He had like listed out in like a rankings order, like power rankings for the episode. I didn't even watch a single interview beforehand. I'm sorry, Mike. I know you did so much work on those, but I'm just like elbows deep in Big it's Brother. A, it's a and real I like Brad I move of you, Maggie, to be like, I know, face, I like do, uh, I'm, I'm really any sorry. Stuff. Yeah, I'm but like, I'm no. Did you at least go ahead, click Kristen. the links? Did you give him the Absolutely. clicks? Absolutely. You're not going to read it. At least give him the clicks. Listen, I'm, I I'm, 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 I'm a cheap buy here. It just give me the clicks and I'm happy. <laughs> but I but I was so completely like unspoiled in every possible way going in. Like I didn't know anything about anybody. So it was so fun. And it really, Survivor is very calming to me. Like it just, because it, it's an easy, it was an easy binge on me. Like I, you, it's quick. It's tight you know it's 13 episodes a season versus a big brother season which is 30 episodes sometimes 30 plus and so and you really get a strong narrative because they have the whole end of the season to work with when they're editing so I just thought it was such a fun episode I picked out my favorites I would pause the episode and talk at my poor roommate who was like please can we just keep going why do you have to explain to me what you would do in this moment you know but I had great time it's it's so fun i, I i'm loving i i do love watching survivor because it makes me feel just like a chill reality fan versus how absolutely wild i feel when big brother season is on so yeah that's mm -hmm. interesting so your roommate became a fan of survivor over the course of the past year Yes. Yeah, so I was watching from beginning to like trying to catch up. So I started at right. season one and watched in order. And I watched Kagayan and he watched Kagayan with me. And then he mm. started to get really into it. And he was like, what should I watch next? And I used Shannon Gus's uh, chart and sent it to him and was like, this is what I do think you need to do, though. Like, I wanted him before he watched Micronesia to watch 12 so he could understand who Sari was. Mm -hmm. But he he watched Shannon's chart order. And he is, when I tell you, the biggest super, like, way more of a super fan than I am. Like, he's all in. Like I said, he made power rankings. Like, come on. So, Yeah. <laughs> I love that, though, because I think this represents and we sort of experienced this uh, a bit in like the preseason sussing out everyone's fandoms like there are two types like there is the 
uh, the Ricards and the JDs of the world, right? And the Heathers who are saying day one fan. And then you have someone like Danny who basically says, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I didn't have a job anymore. So I just watched a bunch of Survivor and now I like it. I think it's so interesting, mm-hmm. particularly after this past year, in many ways, how much this has affected mm-hmm. people. But it's genuine to say, I think there are some people that wouldn't be playing on the show this season were it not for that time in quarantine to binge Survivor and actually get into the show. Completely yeah, I, agree. Yeah, but I would have 100% believe it. Yeah, Maggie, I had a similar, one of my graduate students got super into Survivor. Same way, I also sent Shannon's list. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, this love is it. Bible for, for <laughs> watching mm-hmm. Survivor seasons. And, uh, and she came over to watch with Puya and I, and it was really funny to see the contrast because Puya and I had done the draft. I had done the preseason B&B. Like, and we were like, oh yeah, so-and-so, oh yeah, this, this, this. And she, you know, was just like, she's just like there to enjoy and have a good time and like, chill out and we're the total nerds about the whole situation but it's you know it's still obviously a ton of fun yeah that's it's also great. how i watch survivor i like the, the third option of like yeah i'm, I'm just here I, I i'm also here it's fun yeah. mm-hmm. well that's why i like survivor for- gabon come on like who, yeah. who loves survivor like survivor gabon the best like i am just a filthy casual and i, I, mean, I don't care I, i'll admit it it's not Scally's number one, but he really likes Gabon. So I don't don't come for Survivor fans. And, and like I Gabon. would say, Maggie, never sully yourself. You're not a filthy casual, okay? You are a clean casual. Do not Thank like you. denigrate yourself. Don't cover yourself in trash by being like, I'm a casual fan. Again, Thank you very considering much. the levels of fandom we have in people on this show. You know, yeah. I, I only well, dismiss yeah. casual. I only dismiss casuals during a very specific segment here on the BNB. I mean, we wouldn't be staying in the BNB if we cared about cleanliness, Mike. That's mm, very true. We are filthy. True. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's tough because Leon and I, we had to fill up everyone's water supply by carrying little pans of water back and forth for four hours, and we're just covered in sweat and grime at this point. <sighs> if only we had counted the, the triangles, Mike. <laughs> and that's a, so this, this ep- week is a really interesting, like, litmus test of the fandom in so many ways. And one of them is everybody Wednesday night being like, these idiots. Why didn't they count the triangles? It's the easiest thing to do. There are six of you. Cut to, you know, there's a a survivor post on Twitter that's like, how many triangles do you count? And until Corey B had to come up with an algorithmic program to calculate how many triangles there were, each and every person got the answer wrong. So, like, it's so fun how the armchair quarterbacks would 100% be sleeping in the dirt without a pot, flint, or well, I mean, did they spend four hours counting them for the tweet? Like, you have four hours to do it. I feel like that's a little different than just, like, oh, here's my first guess that I'm posting on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But they only had one guess. So, like, they they could have also taken the four hours to to make the guess as well. I don't know. I, I, th- I think it, it was deceptively simple. Uh, the, the triangle task. It's just like that amazing race detour of like mm-hmm. simple but complicated yeah. versus like strength based and yeah you sweat a lot but like you'll definitely get it done. Uh, so I, I do think it just it just shows how you know what there's a lot of stuff that's being thrown out there. Some of it's maybe a bit complicated and uh, you know I think it, it makes us realize you know Jeff has been has been doing this thing during the preseason. I don't know if you've been paying attention of like let me provide to you a scenario and see what how would you would you react. Do? Yeah, mm-hmm. what would you do? That hit Mark Summer show from back in the day. Uh, it's it's an interesting reminder again of like, uh, listen, we're all just fans at the end of the day. No matter mm-hmm. what our level, we all got the triangles wrong. Yeah, if <laughs> I think if someone had made me try to carry the water, I would have been like triangles all day. But if someone else was mm-hmm. like, yeah, we'll do the water, I'd be like, go ahead. <laughs> I'm totally yeah. fine with that. Agreed. I also the triangles would have freaked me out because are you counting the parchment as a triangle? Are you counting Ooh. the wood as a triangle? Like that, that is something that on the beach, I would have been like, I don't trust any of these producers. They, they asked that Guinea pig question and big brother. I don't <laughs> yeah, trust anybody. Okay. Forever scarred. That question legitimately yes. has like scarred me for any type of trick answer that they could bring up. Like I mean, that's the other thing too, is like if the, the big triangle, the total outside triangle, because the question is, is it 50 or 51? So it was like, does the big triangle on the outside count? Or are you only talking about triangles embedded within the giant triangle? I don't but know. It's the big triangle, 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 triangle I'm just saying. It's complicated. I don't yeah. know. This season is the game within the game. What about the triangle within the triangle? I think that's Ooh. the big sign of what's to come. 
And that's what we will be exploring this season on the Survivor BMB. The triangle exactly. within to a figure triangle. Figure out truly the triangle within the triangle. All right, let, let's start talking about this episode through the conduit of, of some of our tried and true segments here. Because we got to start with the two people who ended up going here. So I think I talked about this during the preseason BNB that I had expected one hour boot, one hour boot. I thought it was just going to be two episodes yep. crammed into one. I did not expect a double tribal council on day three. But again, if the, the season is, you know, let's get dangerous Darkwing Duck, then I suppose that it makes sense for, for them to do this. I know, Kirsten, you had said that it was interesting to see, like, the flow of it. But did you like it overall, their, their choice to do this? Yeah, I think that it made it makes sense to to do that. And they gave us enough episode to actually get to know people that it doesn't feel like our first two boots kind of got shafted in that way like we still do feel like we know them and could kind of understand why they got votes uh I think that if it had been like a one hour episode and they were like oh we're doing these double like tribal councils then I think that would have been really really um unfair to us and to the survivors uh but I I thought it was fine I just uh they had to make sure Puya got the double grenade you know oh my god it was so uncomfortable. Yeah, I was going to say, Liana, did you almost lose your TV due to Puya probably, like, throwing his phone through it over the course it, of those two hours? Was, no, it was like one... He went through the, you know, the stages of grief, right? It was like watching him go through the different stages of, like, denial and what... You know, it was like, no, 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 this isn't going to happen. Like, it wasn't immediate, like, anger, right? The anger came later, like, once. And then we were still working through the acceptance phase. Um, but it was, yeah, it was like pretty unbelievable um and and the thing was is that the eric one also came down to either um uh, one of my boots or one of his and so it was like well one of us is getting the grenade and so i'm secretly hoping it's eric he's probably secretly hoping that it's tiffany but then the sarah one was just the nail in the coffin yeah, that, and that helps too. You know, I, I do feel partially bad for Eric because I guess he technically is the first voted out. I'm mm -hmm. not sure how they determined who goes to tribal council first. They they went the team that did the worst in the challenge. Went yeah, to I guess I guess tribal council. Yes, like they stopped the challenge after Luvu won, but I guess they're like, eh, you would have theoretically finished in second yeah. place, so we're so, going to give yeah. you the silver medal. Um, so unfortunately, Abraham has to go here. The, the other thing I wanted to say about the double tribal council is I like it because it ensures that two separate teams go to tribal or two separate tribes go instead mm -hmm. of the possibility of the same tribe losing back to back. It oh, yeah. diversifies mm -hmm. who's yep. going to tribal council. So you get to see 12 of these players have to go to tribal versus six. And then I guess the remaining five. So that's another mm -hmm. reason why I liked it. That's, that's a, a very good point. point. Yeah. Cause that, and yeah. Lou was going to sit one person out, <laughs> but like now we get a better sense of dynamics. There's yes. always this adage that Stephen Fishback throws out, right. Of like, you can make all the plans in the world, but until you actually put pen to paper, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that can completely change everything. Like now people have voted. And so now I can imagine that changes things up a bit. And I also just love the, the single challenge as well. If they, I know that like the, the marooning sort of counted as a challenge, but I think to that point that Kirsten made about, you know, uh, delegating a lot of time to getting to know people. Like I honestly felt we got nearly everyone's perspective. I think we missed out on like Deshaun, Erica and Heather, but outside of that, like 15 other people's perspectives and a Survivor premiere. I don't know, Maggie, that's a pretty damn good percentage. It's not 16.666, but... It was, I mean, it was really great because, like I said, as somebody who hadn't done all of their preseason research, like, mm -hmm. I felt like I came away knowing almost everybody's names, you know? Like, I, I was able to intelligently talk about a couple different people with my roommate and, you know ask him, you know, questions. And he was like, oh my gosh, you know, Peridium predicted that, that Eric was going to go home first. And I was like, wow, he did. He's so good. Like <laughs> it was, it was very fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. Isn't that so funny? So I love that. I know. You, got, you got your roommate watching Survivor and now he's telling you about pretty well, pretty videos. Know. <laughs> so incredible. funny i was like oh my gosh this is so like i love it so much because i've always been like the crazy reality tv freak mm -hmm. so now i have somebody else yeah you get to but, share the um, load a little bit does he know that you're exactly. friends with pretty um like is he jealous no, he he asked me if I had ever heard of who Peridium was. So I he like oh. 
I was like, yes, I've played, like, I, I know him actually. And he, but he, he knew that already. So like, clearly when I told him, he didn't care, you know, he, he only cares retroactively now that he understands, you know? Right. Right. But, uh, but yeah, uh, what was I going to say about the premiere? Um, I just really thought like, you know, having two hours to get to really know these people is what you need. I think in in a situation like this, especially if you're going to lose two people, I would much rather lose two people and get two full hours than lose mm -hmm. one person and only get one hour. Oh, that's, that's yeah, that's my, actually a really yeah. interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I personally mm -hmm. think especially after this, and I would say the 39 premiere as well, and I think the 37 premiere was an hour and a half as well. I think all Survivor premiere should be at least an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. That's like, I think my rule of thumb, because it allows us to like, get to know at least a good chunk of people and understand the narrative. Now look, are there questions? Absolutely. Even after talking with Sarah, I still have no idea what happened at that Green Tribe Tribal Council, but mm -hmm. that being yeah, said, neither does I feel she. like- Yeah, neither you supposed to get it from her? <laughs> No, well, I well, she was one sixth of the perspective, so I think that you know uh, things will get filled in a little bit there. But yeah, I, I think that it at least does a good job of you know at least we got to know who Sarah and Abraham were, and it wasn't mm -hmm. through the shoehorn thing of like completely well, she, she biffed the puzzle and so she's out. It was like okay, but here are the other things about her, and I'm hopeful that like Australian Survivor, we get more preseason packages throughout. Like I hope they don't end here. I know that we only have an hour, but. I do feel bad for those people who did not get the out of, you know, out off island footage that they're mm -hmm. like, wait, is my life not interesting enough to get, you know, footage of me running a race or pictures of me and my grandma? <laughs> yeah, they didn't provide good enough uh, off the island footage. So like, sorry, not allowed. Yeah. Well, I mean, and the thing is, is when we have limited time to get to know all of the contestants, the show kind of has to choose. Okay, well, we have to allow the viewers to know and understand the people that are leaving early and the people that are staying. And so it's like a balancing act of, you know, you want to show the people that are leaving so we do get to know them, but you don't want to only show the people that are leaving early because then you're just like telegraphing what's going to happen. So I feel like it is like a really interesting choice on how they're choosing who's getting that content when. All right. Well, Liana, pretty unpredicted. That Eric Abraham would be the first person voted out of Survivor 41. Did you believe the same? What was your preseason prediction of Eric Abraham, aka Eric, aka Abraham, aka Eric, aka Abraham? Uh, that'd be the Julie Chen move. would be like Eric, aka Abraham, as she was talking to people <laughs> that got eliminated from the show. How did yeah. you think he would do preseason? Okay, so I said that he would be, I couldn't remember if we were doing merge slash jury, so I put pre-merge slash jury, so I hope that there's no amb so like, ambiguity with a middle person in there. Oh, yeah, I did I did pre-jury, but I, I don't even know how big the jury is going to be this season, so I put seven yeah. pre-jury people. I think I, I think okay. one of mine is going to be like the merge boot, but not be on the jury. I was sort of thinking they'd do the same thing that they did, that they did with Triple H, which was the last 18-person season we had. Right, yeah, okay, all right, that makes sense. All right, so yeah, so I had him pre all of that, and I said that he would uh, speak very loudly, so he's going to be overheard talking about who will go home, womp womp. As the alpha male type, he will fail to form connections on his starting tribe, and he will be the first one gone. Ooh! Ah! Wow. I didn't say for, I, okay, well, I, okay, I'm gonna, I said first one gone from yellow. I don't know if that I counts any differently. Counts. It's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Really um, good. And then I said that he will lose the flint that they're gonna win, but we're gonna see his negotiation skills. I feel like I just didn't finish writing that. I said his closest yeah. ally would be no one and his enemy would be Evie. <laughs> Okay. His closest ally would be no one. I'm yep. dead. That is so funny. <laughs> Poor Abraham Island. Uh, uh, yeah, so I also thought he'd be pre all that. Uh, I said that he would be pre-jury. I said that he would get the angriest after, is it Yase, Yasa? Yase. Yasa like, I don't remember how they pronounced it. Wait, wait, Yue? No, you, Yua? Ua. I thought it was Ua. 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 That's the most Ua. fun one to say. Ua. Ua. Ua is one of the most fun tribe names to say ever. I love it. Uh, we have Uva Luvu. Now it's interesting because like I saw a secret Luvu. scene where where they made fire and like Evie called it Yasa, but then I think Jeff called it Yasa. So I'm I'm not sure how it should be pronounced. Yeah. Yasa. Yasa. <laughs> yeah, that's what you say like once you I don't know get a nice plank going on while you're building your your den, right? Yasa work. 
<laughs> None of oh. the construction that way. I mean, I did see part of that Boston Rob home celebrity home remodeling show. Which did you see that? He's like remaking his parents. Oh, I, oh yeah, I, I talked to him about it this week. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay, but how is that Man, allowed? I thought they yes. had to do it for like a fan or something like that. I thought that no, was the no, whole you know, they do it for, no, a, for this, you, it's a loved secret one. celebrity renovation. Yeah, it's for someone who like you want to repay who's yeah. near and dear to your heart. You don't pick a fan of yours. That's what I thought the, the whole home. point was that it was gonna be like you surprise them and be like, look, you know, you're such what? a huge Survivor player what? fan, and then Boston Rob shows up and he's like, hey, like I'm gonna redo your kitchen. Do I don't you know. Never Boston mind. Rob it's fine. would it all care? If he like pulls up to someone's like, hey, I heard you're a big fan of me. Yeah. Here's, here's your new living yeah. room. Yeah. No That's what I got. The tea. That's okay, what I, got. I just I need to sorry, we need to rewind. What Mike, what were you talking about doing construction? I like you none of what you said made any sense to me. <laughs> it was a it was a joke about yes, come a saw. So you know, you know like how like, oh, yeah, yes, saw is like, oh, yeah, saw. But then he was like, it's like when you, like, get an, a really good plank. And I was like, I don't think that's a correct yeah, you know, construction like terminology. Nice, like, nice Mike's feeling. not going to be on trading spaces anytime soon. I mean, it did. I thought you meant, like, the exercise, the plank. That's, that's what I thought at first. Okay. That's where my mind bit. went. Because I feel like people are like, Oh yeah, look at this plank. Like, ooh, oh come on, this, you don't you don't pull up to Lowe's and you're like, oh no. that's a that's a good plank, baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. give me that two by four. Ooh, ooh, ooh. got a good plank going. Give ooh, that I'm okay. that is why I'm not I, allowed going into Lowe's. I've never done that, but going into Lowe's or the Home Depot, it smells of like fresh cut wood, and that mm -hmm. I am always like, yes, plank. Like yes, 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 yes. 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 So anyway, back to Yassaw. I said that he would get the angriest after Yassaw loses the challenges. I said that though he would lead the tribe in the first vote, people get annoyed with all the singing and talking he's doing at camp. Parentheses, think Jimmy T in Nicaragua. I said that there'll be a montage of him droning on about something like he's a professor giving a lecture. Mm. And that uh, my, I guess my narrative was that like he'd be he'd do his keep the tribe strong thing for the first vote. But then he'd be so annoying that Xander would join the women and vote him out, finding saying that he was too annoying and untrustworthy. And despite his demeanor, he gives a very kind farewell to his tribe on the way out. His closest ally is Voce, and his enemy is Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Okay, pretty close. Um, so what, so okay. what do you two think? Who's, who had the better so, finger on Abraham? Here's the thing. Even if I had thought that... Mike had the better one, which I don't. I think it was clearly Liana. I just refuse to call David by his last name. I, he doesn't deserve that respect. And the fact that you called him Voce, I'm like, no. Doesn't it show up on his Chiron is just Voce? It, yeah. And so I feel like, uh, not to derail, but like there's there was like a few situations where suddenly like there's, someone's being called by a name that I wasn't expecting. Like, for example, Eric being Abraham. Is, is David Ben Shapiro? Is that who we're talking he, about? Yes. Yeah, Ben yes. Shapiro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Liana had a very, very strong prediction out the gate, Mike. I'm sorry. So oh, I no, have to give her the point. Fine. She did. She did. I agree. Liana had a great prediction, but you did have a great prediction. I think about Xander in there. Like I'm, I'm impressed with like the meta, like gameplay that you have going on in your prediction, because I do think Xander is the one who, like, he is smart enough to make moves like that, join up with the women. Like, I think he's really one to watch on the tribe. So I, I think that there's, like, a fun element of, like, not particularly about Eric slash Abraham, but your, the about best part the, of your prediction was when you was talked this, about someone else. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know. Did, did either of you do any sort of interesting strategy with your – predictions this season like i know liana has historically like used a robot or other other things like so, that is there like a twist i mean my, my i guess my twist is that i think for the first time in a while i basically did like a fan fiction of the season like i actually created a narrative for it as opposed to just like yeah i think this poster will go pre-jury and here's why i was more so like all right, let me piece together how I think this season will go. And then and I noticed and appreciated it. That's what I'm saying. That that was very clear in your prediction. Thank That's you. why I said Thank you. like the, the meta of it all. Like the, it's very clear. He's nice theater work, kids. So they'll be doing a table read of Mike's <laughs> prediction. Oh, get out the salad bowl. <laughs> Maybe 
that's what it is, Mike. I just well, understand you on that theater exactly. kid level. Exactly, we're connecting. Liana, what, I don't know, did we you are. try anything special this season? Please help me because I've been so busy. So they're all over the place. Oh, like, okay. So now, okay. like, is this an asterisk next to every prediction that you get correct? I mean, I think so. You got to give him some credit. Credit where credit is due. I've done the whole narrative thing in the past, and that one's super fun, but it takes a lot of work because you have to craft essentially a whole fan fiction, like, story in your head. Um, but that, I, I was... I think Xander is one to watch. I'm super, I was super impressed with him, maybe because I had low expectations going in, but the fact that he was able to, you know, one, be immediately trusted by the people on his tribe, which was interesting. There's something about his aura, I guess, that just gives that off. And then what he was able to do with the whole not, prisoner's dilemma that's not actually a prisoner's dilemma, like kind of thing. I thought that that was also very impressive. So mm-hmm. I almost had kind of written him off from the get go, but I'm, I'm, I, Xander, I got my eye on you. I think for the meantime, I will be ironically standing Xander and then we'll see if it becomes uh, more serious as time goes on. I think that's, that's totally valid. I actually really like that approach. He's got, he's got very big anyway, here's Wonderwall energy of like, (laughs) yes. Yes! All right, everybody. I I came to this really choice decision. It's really interesting compared to the sort of like the louder, more brash energy that we get from a lot of other survivor characters. Like I always appreciate the people that are just very calm and measured of, yeah, this is what I decided to do. You know, he very much has like the Terran energy compared to someone like Eric Abraham, who probably has more of my energy. Uh, I appreciate the levels of, of different types of temperature. Don't put there. yourself down like that, Mike Bloom. <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, now I'm going to imagine all of Xander's confessionals with, anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> after it like just stick it in he's already got like yeah go ahead maggie no i was just like very horrified at the fact that xander was about to jump into the ocean with that cable knit sweater on i was like i don't care if it's cold on the island i'm taking that off leaving it on the barge that does not get in the water with me that is i I don't know i don't know what that situation is like what happened to Jeannie's drug rug right she was wearing that when they when they were on the boat did that get wet (laughs) I, 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 I don't dr- know. Drugs are resilient. That's the point, right? So, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Well, let's talk about the second person to go here. I'm going to start. Because if you listen to the preseason stuff, you know how I thought Sarah Wilson would do. Uh, she was not my winner pick, oh, but okay. I did have her making the finale. In fact, I had her uh, finishing second place in this season. Uh, well, in a different way, she was second. If they played out the exact opposite things happened this season, <laughs> yes, I suppose that is the case. I feel bad. <laughs> Actually, when I when I got on the line with her for the interview that I did, she's like, I'm so sorry. I know you <gasps> believe in oh, me. I'm like, I feel sorry oh, for, for oh, reminding you of how good you were on paper preseason. Yeah. Only to get your oh, I love her. Out. Uh, so I, again, I had her making the finale. I said that she would get a tearful confessional in episode one about losing her grandma to COVID, which serves to like fuel her entire journey, right? Like this is the thing that we check in. The finale is like, you know, after losing my grandma to COVID, I wanted to come in and do this for her. I said that she would make a day one connection with Ricard, which is sort of like the opposite alliance that she talked about preseason. I said that she would serve as the main conduit between Ricard and JD in her alliance. Uh, She shows the most remorse at voting people out uh, because she told me preseason that she doesn't want to be empathetic whatsoever. And that is much easier said than done. She would show the she would come off despite coming off as sweet. As soon as someone comes for her, she gets super feisty and reams them out at tribal council. Parentheses Nasir. Okay, I guess Sarah was going to do Nasir. Yeah, exactly. Uh, She finds the most advantages of the season, something that makes her competitive with Ricard. Uh, she asked him to throw her into the fire making challenge against Heather to make sure she doesn't make the final three. So I guess I spoiled everyone as to what I think my end game is going to be. Uh, <laughs> her closest ally, surprise, surprise, is Ricard, and her enemy is Nasir, the ream target, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I like these little teasers of what your story is going to be like. It's, it's so like fun. a puzzle. Yeah, we're like putting the whole thing together. Um, the game within a game. It's game within a game. Triangle within a triangle. So I uh, I also was pretty high on Sarah. I had her making the jury, although not the finale. Um, I said that her strength in the water will make her an asset early. Hashtag keep the tribe strong. Uh, despite being a big player in strategic decisions, the edit will not give her credit. Purple Sarah. She'll spend a lot of time looking for an idol slash advantage, but she will never find one. And I said that her closest ally would be Erica and her enemy would be Brad. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. 
I'm sorry. What placement did you have for her again? I had jury. I had jury for jury. her. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. This is a tough I, one. Maggie, what are you thinking? I kind of have to give it to Mike because, again, like obviously his placement was completely opposite. Literally wrong, the exact but, opposite. And you know but, what? That's impressive. <laughs> yes. But I also think that like – Again, in the meta of all of it, like you had, like she was closely aligned with Ricard. Mm -hmm. She did get a whole COVID thing about her grandmother. Like you under, it's very clear, Mike, that you understand how the editors and people like do this show in just these two, you know, little things that you've said. So I think that like that in general, like you said more closely than Liana did, like what I saw on my screen and last night's episode yeah, or in Wednesday's yeah. episode. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm also happy to give it to Meg, but I'll put the asterisk on it that uh, Liana did not lose. That one was Puya's fault. Oh, yeah, I like that. It was Puya's fault. <laughs> yeah. If you if you win, it's your fault. If Yay! you lose, it's Puya's yeah. fault. Okay, so yeah, point for Liana, <laughs> negative point for Puya. Good, good, good. good that good. is a win-win. All right, Liana, let's get into the first game of the season. Yay! What are we doing? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're here. So as I talked about, Earlier on, the Jeff Probst monologue to open the show was just the beginning of a new era of Survivor. And so the obviously, one. obviously, we had to talk about it. So what I have done is put together a brand spanking new Jeff Probst monologue that y'all are going to help me write. That's right. We're doing Mad Libs. We're going to fill in some of the blanks here to figure out what Jeff may have said if we're going to rewrite the script just a little bit. I'm so, so excited. Me yes. too. I love Mad Libs. So I actually missed it the first time because I was getting my friend, the graduate student, I was getting her from downstairs. So as soon as I went to rewatch the episode and it started, I was like immediately, yes, this is something we have to talk about. Because the fact that Jeff, I think, calls it, there's one moment that just really got me. It was the... Yes. So we're going to lean into the best kind of survivor fun, the dangerous kind. I was like, okay, yes, I'm here. I, I think my this. favorite part was Jeff literally taking applause and being like, like we're trying something, okay? Like, yeah. What do you want from us? Trying to like devil's advocate himself. Like, <laughs> wait, look, I know you're probably screaming at me at the TV right now. Like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm trying things right now. Wait, wait, uh, what do you want from me? Like, uh, we're just trying to evolve the experiment. Do, like, do you what, even what, like what, me? What, do you, <laughs> what, what, what do you want? What do you even want? Oh, okay, God. so. We're going to go around the horn and y'all provide the different types of words that I need. We'll fill it in and then we will read our very own Jeff Probst monologue. So, Mike, let's kick things off with a noun. Let's go with ficus. <laughs> okay, yeah. Classic okay. ficus. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, Maggie, another noun. Ariana Grande. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Classic. Kirsten, verb. Oh, no. What goes with Ariana Grande and ficus? <laughs> the point <laughs> That's is that the it key, doesn't. nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, run. Run. Okay. Uh, Mike, back to you. I need an activity. Ooh, tying your shoes. Okay. I don't know if that's considered an activity. I think so. I think I, it, technically. I guess I yeah. think of activity more so like, I don't know, something you do with someone. Like, hey, let's go tie our shoes. I don't think you necessarily. <laughs> well, that's no, like when you're, when you're hanging out with a child uh -huh. or a Kiva, you could be like, hey, let's go tie our shoes. <laughs> yeah, let's learn I'm to bored. tie Want to go tie our shoes? No Velcro today. <laughs> All right. I'm going to need an adjective from each of you. So Maggie, let's start with you. An adjective. Bubbly. Okay. Kirsten? Uh, no, too dirty. Oh, no. Uh, never oh, dirty. never to. Never there's too dirty. Too dirty. Never yeah, too dirty. Exactly. That's, that's the number one rule of the B&B. &B. Uh, exactly. sw swollen. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. And Mike? Flared. Ooh, flared. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Maggie, back to you. A plural noun. Doctors. Okay. Kirsten. Oh, another plural noun. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Mike, a verb. Let's go with plagiarize. Okay. <laughs> Maggie, a number. 940. Okay. I, but what? we're on the B&B. Yeah, 
You can answer whatever number you want. Oh All right, God. Kirsten. Well, the low hanging down. fruit, like the bottom I of this tree is picked clean at this point. All the low hanging fruit is gone. Yeah. We're 69 so much, the number doesn't even have meaning it anymore. It has no meaning anymore. Okay. You said, sorry, a noun? A noun yes. A uh, banana. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike, a noun? Microchip. <laughs> And uh, a verb ending in ed, Maggie. Shimmied. <laughs> okay. All right, Kirsten, not a number, but a location. The Among Us airship. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I thought you were looking in the corner of your room for a second to be like, I need a location. It was, I no, it's something I do a lot when I'm like trying to think. So I'll just like look at something else or I'll like look at my Apple watch. Like it'll be like, this isn't helping me at all. <laughs> but I just like need to look at it to like ground myself. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Mike, you get a number. Oh, 420. <laughs> that tree hasn't been picked yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an adjective, Maggie. Uh, blue. <laughs> okay, Kirsten, a food item. Already so a food uh, also in... would be... <laughs> uh, no, a, a food item. A food item, food specifically, item. yes. Um, top ramen. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, an adjective, Mike. To go with uh, stubborn. I need a verb. Thrust. Mm. <laughs> uh, another verb. How am I supposed to follow thrust? I mean, how does one ever follow thrust? <laughs> um, fall. All right, we're almost there. Adjective, Mike. Let's go with. Uh, let's go with filthy in honor of Maggie. Mm. <laughs> All right, another adjective. Um, <laughs> and then Kirsten, you're going to get a noun. Okay. Dirty. I like, this, I like this on deck style. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Dirty. Yes, I'm looking around the room. All right. Dirty, dirty, all right. Around. Filthy, dirty. Got it. All right. And Kirsten, a noun. Uh, bicycle helmet. Okay. <laughs> My helmet's right there. I, I just looked at it and said. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I do it, too. I just, everything's like candles, makeup brushes, and chapstick. Um, Okay. We are ready. And I will try to do, I'll try to channel Jeff's energy during this yeah. monologue, but no guarantees. I am not the actor of the group. All right, here we go. <clears throat> it's been a while. I've missed you. Well, I've missed the Ficuses and I've missed the Ariana Grandes, but mostly <laughs> I've missed our runs together. Oh. Survivor started as this tiny little tying your shoes experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and it has evolved into one of the most bubbly, swollen, and flared <laughs> games ever seen on television. <laughs> you've Something been called Dr. Stuff. Joe. <laughs> well, you're lucky. Okay. So, and you've been there every step of the way. Which is why we thought it would be fun this season to invite you inside the game a little more. To make you our doctors. Oh, no, that's yeah. bad. <laughs> it worked out. Listen, if the past year has taught me anything, the internet should not be used as doctors, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do my own research. Okay. I mean, you have a PhD, you're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's continue. So at times, you'll know what's happening before the beans know. <laughs> you, can, you can plagiarize along. You can 940th guess. And like this, new advantage, the banana advantage. <laughs> this, this advantage comes with a microchip. So you oh. wanna so if you want this, you better be sure. <laughs> like what it gets implanted, you're gonna get tracked with the banana advantage. Yeah, like don't eat the banana. There's yeah, you can't go back. It. Yeah. It's major it, surgery man. to remove the microchip afterwards. So you have right. to really want yeah, it. Yeah, but, but I think we have some doctors out there, hopefully millions of Oof. them that'll help do that in that case. Okay. Yes. Good luck. So what would you do if you shimmied it? <laughs> I'm gonna hide this at the Yasa tribe among us airship. 
The other two tribes will have one as well. <laughs> we just want to have fun this season. So we're going to lean into the best kind of survivor fun. The blue kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Very hey, the blue friendly. Kind. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Scrub the video. All right. Thank you. This video can't be posted. <laughs> yeah. Mike ruined it. All right. Uh, plus, we're going to increase the pace. These players will go 420 days, which means they're going to hit the ground running because they have nowhere and no time to hide. Plus, a lot of time to hide. Yeah, yeah they really have know. over a year. To hide. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> Only more than a year. All right. Plus, stubborn tribes, no top ramen. Penalties for losing, and you gotta thrust everything. Oh no, 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 no! We did that already. We did that season. That didn't go well. And even then, the unexpected, dangerous twists can take it all all away from you. What do you want from me? We're just trying to fall. <laughs> uh the experiment a little more and see how it goes oh and for you filthy dirty survivor players there's a game within the game okay, just so maybe for this you. Is the blue game yeah <laughs> the blue fun <laughs> ah it's been too long glad to be bicycle helmet <laughs> Yay, that was Yay. Cool. Woo! Yeah, I'm definitely job, changing Liana. it to, oh, for you filthy, dirty survivor players. <laughs> There's a game dirty. within Is that game. like negging the doctors out there? Like, oh, you filthy sur fans out there. You yeah. Are, nice to have you back. We missed you. <laughs> glad to be Bicycle Helmet. I, I'm also glad to be Bicycle Helmet. Yeah. All I, right. I think it does so make sense, though, if you're going for 420 days. Like, you would 940th guess every single decision, right? Because you have... Yeah. I, you have 14 months to play Survivor. Like, I think through things a lot, personally. Well, I think your brain would stop working, though. Like, you, would, you wouldn't be able to guess anymore because you'd be so hungry because there's no Top Ramen. Yeah, there's no Top Ramen. No Top Ramen. Oh, man. And that banana advantage, that sounds intense. I'm, like, nervous for the banana advantage. Yeah, that might be the first advantage that's accidentally eaten. Yeah, right. Yeah. The banana <laughs> etiquette advantage of it all. Okay, so that made no sense, but here's something that also made no sense. Jeff Probst gave an interview to Dalton Ross. It was a, you know, host Jeff Probst explains the thinking behind the big format changes for the twists that were revealed in season premiere 41. Fine. Generic interview, you know, given some answers about the, the different advantages and blah, 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 whatever. But there was one answer that was super weird at the very end of the interview. So, Look, there's no way to Mad Libs this because it's already super weird. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to go through it and I'm going to ask you guys some questions. You'll work together, the three of you, to figure out what in the heck Jeff is talking about. Uh, so shout out Rob Sesternino. I know him and Chappelle talked about it on the feedback show, but we're going to do our very own look at it because it's just, it needs more coverage, okay? the It's, it's, it's never enough for this. Okay, so here's the, the question that Dalton asked. Uh, Dalton asked, finally, after discussing it with the contestants, you decided to tweak your trademark challenge intro line, eliminating the word guys. While I support the change, I am concerned about one other aspect of the equation, which has yet to be addressed. Will you still look at your feet when you tell the players to come on in? Okay, so that's a question. All right, fine, fun, little cheeky question. This is what Jeff replies. So glad you asked. Yes, I will continue to look at my feet, and I guess I'll finally share the reason I do it. Wow. I didn't expect to be this open. I'm a bit emotional, as this is pretty revealing. But Wait, here this it is goes. verbatim what he's saying? This, uh, and I quote, this is what's written in the article, okay? So this is, is me he being, Is he reading. joking? Well, this is going to be up for us to decide, I suppose. I think he's being legit, though, if I had to put my finger on the scale. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so here it goes. That moment, and this again, I quote, reading verbatim from the article, that brief moment when I look down at my feet is when all the magic happens, for that is the moment I connect with my powerful alter ego and guide known as blank. So you guys are going to have to guess, I will give you four options, what Jeff's powerful alter ego and guide is called. 
I just thought he would was making sure he's on his mark. Why? Like, what, what? is this so all is about? He like, he's turning to like Shazam. He's giving himself an. Well, we're gonna like... have we're gonna have four options, and I would like to hear okay, them. All right, okay, all right, all right. so let let me read you the options. All right, is it A the Spirit Guide, B the Dragon, C Survivor Guy, or D Boston Rob? Oh. Survivor guy, it has to be right. I would That's imagine the only so. thing I that mean, would make I just, even a little this, bit of sense. Yeah, so I yes. However, everything else we've heard to this point doesn't make sense, and I could totally see him being like spirit guy or dragon. Uh, no, no, I don't he's think not Drake. Yeah. Definitely not Maybe. Boston Rob, because otherwise he'd be saying yes, saw. You know, Leon is just going to put Boston Rob as an option for every question. And if you don't I, already know that, like, it's, it's uh, obviously you know, going to be there. I, I think it has to be Survivor Guy, because I think this also speaks from a meta perspective, right? One of the reasons why there was that period of time where Jeff was, like, one foot out the door on Survivor. He started the Jeff Probst talk show is because he didn't want to be known as Survivor Guy. But now he's embraced it fully. So I do think this is, like, a key choice of phrase that he would want to call his alter ego Survivor Guy. Okay. You are correct. So the quote is... I connected, I connect with my powerful alter ego and guide known only as Survivor Guy. Okay, so he goes on. Survivor Guy first came to me years ago when we were sitting in the Marquesas Islands filming the fourth season of the show. Well, that's that's like when JD was like four years old. I know. He would have no reference, wouldn't even remember Survivor Guy. Okay, so Jeff says- JD I was, was not born yet, Mike. Sorry. Oh I was God. like four years no. old. <laughs> Wait, no. Wait, no. Well, 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 I was, Mar I was Mar born Marquesas, in 95. Yeah, Marquesas was 2002, so. Yeah, so I was when like When was seven. he born? I think he was born in 20, so he was not born. He was born in 2000, right? I don't know, 2001. Either he's a fetus or he's a little potato baby. <laughs> oh, potato. <laughs> potato baby. <laughs> okay. Well, Sorry, anyways, so so yeah, so uh, filming the fourth season of the show. Okay, re well, let's disregard JD's age at the moment. Yeah, I, I can't uh, receive JD's age the rest of this season. <laughs> like moving forward, like no. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeff says I was sitting alone on an island enduring a tremendous rainstorm. This was something I did on a regular basis, as I've always been a method host and wanted to be able to relate to what the players were feeling. You're Jeff Probst. You know, You're not Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, what's the Survivor guy's name? A not Bear Grylls. Survivor guy. Yeah, Bear Grylls. He's <laughs> channeling Bear Grylls energy. <laughs> no, th I mean, this all sounds incredibly coachy to me, right? Like the, the monastic approach. Yeah. I Why do you think I picked the dragon as one of the options? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think, like, like felt very coach here. You know, you make fun of coach, but like 10 years later, you find yourself becoming him. I don't know why, but this is making me really want Jeff Probst to be a contestant on an episode of Manhunter. Mm. Or Naked and Afraid. No, okay. I've already seen enough of Jeff Probst. Naked, yeah, like yeah. two and a half men. <laughs> All right. So I've always been a method host and I wanted to be able to relate to what the players were feeling. I remember seeing an animal scurry past and then seemingly out of nowhere, survivor guy appeared right in front of me. Okay. What animal scurried past Jeff Probst? Was oh, it yeah. A, a lizard, B, a rat, C, a squirrel, or D, a snake? Okay. Well, I don't think squirrels are native to the Marquesa. <laughs> It'd be really like the like a squirrel had like gotten on a plane with them and they had like brought an invasive species. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, like they reason like they say we you know we couldn't go back to the Marquesas because you know it was the the no nos and all the the you know supplies and stuff. No, it's because they accidentally populated the islands with squirrels and they're not allowed back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, do the snake and the rat cancel each other out here, or do you think it's one of them? Ooh, I think it's a lizard. Yeah, I think the snake and rat cancel each other out. I think you're right, Mike. It's right. classic algebra. All right. Yeah, let's go with the lizard. Liana is from science, so she I would am... know algebra. Now, I am from science, but I am not a mathematician. So I'm doing my animal math a little wrong, I guess, because rat was the correct answer. Ooh. Imagine so... seeing a rat and having any reaction other than a horror. Like, my sister and I saw a rat recently. We were walking it, like, rain in front of us and jumped into, like, a storm grate, and it was horrifying. I mean, oh, that's Kirsten. where Survivor Guy came from, though. I know, yeah, like, I, you I know that own. it's different. I know it's it's different. Like, Maggie lives in New York City. City. Like the rats are, are yeah. Thicker. I know, but three different like, rats I... on my walk last night. I saw so <laughs> they it, they follow me around. Did it, like crawl onto your foot. Like this rat was like almost no. on us. 
No, they stay pretty far away, but they okay, are also the size you, you of my arm. A, you can use that as inspiration, though, like Jeff Probst. Like, why yeah, are you not creating right. alter egos after watching these? Maybe rappers? I should yeah, become make Survivor Girl. Yeah, mm -hmm. Survivor Watcher Girl. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Filthy the casual fan girl. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so next. All right, so Survivor Guy appeared right in front of me. Weirdly, he looked a lot like me, only significantly cooler. He I, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I'm really intrigued to see what Jeff's definition of significantly cooler is. Okay. Well, well, yeah, because Jeff Probst is so cool in his khakis and his short sleeve button up. Uh, okay, well, you're uh, you're gonna have the opportunity to figure that out because he wore a animal skins. B, longer hair, C, odd tattoos, or D, a feather necklace. So if it's B, then Jeff has become cooler Jeff, right? With his little mullet that no, he has. Survivor guy. Oh, sorry, survivor guy. <laughs> I yeah. think it, the like, animal skin. <laughs> God, like Jeff has this primal, is like Jeff had like the man some hunter. kind of weird experience. Like, was he on like peyote like, like what yeah as he got bored during his time in season four he's like well might as well trip balls for a hot like, second what is this like i thought host interviews had achieved peak chaos that's what i'm Julie saying Chandler this summer and yet this is happening i think jeff what? saw that and he's like i gotta one up her what on earth is going on because like huh these hosts should not be doing interviews they <laughs> only bad only bad I thought Jeff Probst was so much cooler before we started this game. Well, no, Maggie like, is a cooler version of him. And we yeah, know Survivor we have to find out guy is cool, not Jeff Probst. If, I, okay, if I was their PR person, I would say absolutely no interviews. You see what you need to see on the show. <laughs> you are cut off. Do, do Literally, not know. I, I don't understand. Again, I'm sorry, Jeff's unavailable. All right. All right. So we have, so, okay, so I agree with I agree answer. person. I, I think that we, so I think we discount the longer hair. So we have animal skins. We have feather necklace and what was and the third tattoos. one tattoos and, yes mm. odd, odd tattoos odd tattoos i think it's you know, the feather necklace and one. feather necklace and odd tattoos feel like not like what you know like not good like are you like what what are you in like it's not here, cool Jeff like Rose? None of these options are really like particularly cool. <laughs> like I, if I see someone with odd tat, like if I see someone with cool tattoos, I'm like, oh, that's cool. If I see someone with odd tattoos, I'm gonna think, oh, that's strange. Mm -hmm. How would you classify? Say someone uh, got a tattoo if a certain GoFundMe crossed a certain threshold, and then a brand steel determined the design of the tattoo. Is that a cool tattoo or is that an odd tattoo? <laughs> It's cool because charity. Yeah, it's really cool, Mike. It's definitely a cool tattoo. <laughs> All right, I'll take it at face value. I Aww. think th I think the concept is very odd, but it's not like you got like a bad tattoo. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, so but now you're making me think: Are should we say odd tattoos? Because no, what like it's. You think, think it's animal skins? I think it's not animal skins because that's like. Well, but yeah, that's he's also not like, okay in this moment. Wait, I was like, like, that seems so intense, but also like. Mm. But I don't know if Jeff would find that cool. You know, like we have to really get inside his brain and figure out what is. I, I, I think the feather think necklace. Tattoos. You think? Fe oh, okay. Here's what? a third option. Th vote in third party because he's here. So into he's so into the the individual immunity necklaces. It's like such a reveal every season. But maybe mm. that's wrong. Maybe that's a little right. wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll All right. go what do you with Maggie think? here. I'll, I am the filthy casual. I'll say I'll say feather necklace. Okay. I think we're at an impasse here. I think the three of us all suggested the other three answers, but I'm I'm willing to give it to Maggie to this one. All right. Well, I've got some good news for you because yes, he said a or he said a feather necklace, but he also said all of those other things as well. Trick question. Boom. Gotcha. He said he wore animal skins, had much longer hair, a lot of odd tattoos, and a feather necklace. That is how Jeff describes survivor guy okay so uh if there's like a sammy kappa or like a sean yannel type out there listening uh i will commission you to draw a sketch survivor of survivor guy because i need <laughs> to see this visual picture just and the I idea would, 
I would just like to say to whoever draws Survivor Guy, you can at me at Kirsten said what, but I will not read it because I cannot perceive that at this time. And you're pointing to the camera while you're saying that. Uh, but I won't <laughs> read, I will it. read it anyway. But I won't read it. All right. Well, here's something Jeff does remember. So he said, I'll never forget his first words to me. Any guesses? No multiple Wait, choice. I, I just want to hear. What do you think? What do you think? I'm sorry. He hallucinated. Like he has like an imaginary <laughs> yes. friend. Like yes. named Survivor right. Guy. So I mean, this yeah. Look, it's, it's covered in real. animal skin, odd tattoos, and like <laughs> Fabio length hair. If walks someone up to Jeff Probst. Like if someone I like have that no walks idea. up to you, you don't wait for their first word. You turn and you run. I mean, um, I'm, I'm gonna say that he. I'm gonna say that he said sup. <laughs> okay. I'm beyond Close. perplexed. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. This what I thought we were going to talk about going into this interview. This has taken a hard left. <laughs> I I cannot believe he's giving Julie Chen Moonves a run for her Bible Jesus loving money. Like mm -hmm. I, I I am shocked, and I I have I'm not I have no not a clue. Okay, not a singular <laughs> clue. I think. I think that the the first thing that Survivor Guy said to Jeff was, you see this? All of this could be yours. Everything the light touches. Just don't go to that dark, shadowy place. I like that. I like that answer. I would say, yeah, both are sort of similar. Uh, so here's what, uh, here's what Jeff said. All right, Jeff said, and I quote, Jeff. I am Survivor Guy. <laughs> I All right, I'm glad he introduced himself because he's a right? stranger walking yeah. up to Jeff Probst. Well, he clarifies, I am your alter ego. And if you embrace what I have to offer, I can make your life on Survivor better than ever. So this is Jeff being invited to an MLM, I suppose. I'm not like quite <laughs> He sure. said, hey, babe, how are you doing? Yeah, long uh, time, no fire time. Fire emoji, heart emoji, money emoji. What if I told you that I have the opportunity of a lifetime star eyes emoji? <laughs> to be fair, the way Jeff Probst describes Survivor Guy is sort of like 2021 Joey Amazing. Uh, so yeah, speaking of MLMs and other, you know, going down the I mean, that's hole. a... Uh, I think that's a step past MLM, Michael. <laughs> okay, so uh, so then Jeff continues. We sat for the next six hours as he regaled six me. Six hours? Okay, six hours. he's on drugs. He was not sober he's for this. He's like, so anyone check balls. up on this yeah. man? He sequestered himself on an island, like tripped balls for a quarter of a day to talk with his alter ego and nobody checked in on him? Is there like an episode of Marquesas where he's just like not there because he was too busy communing Tripping with balls. Survivor Guy? Hmm. Yeah, we'll look for the episodes where there's a lot of rain and then we'll try to like line it up. All right, so anyway, so yeah, so Jeff says we sat for the next six hours as he regaled me with tales from his life of jungle living. I'll be honest, I don't remember a lot of it because I was pretty damn cold. Hi. But it was it was clear that he was very earnest, even though his stories seemed completely implausible. That's okay, so is that it's, coach? It's coach. It's, it's coach. coach. It's coach. He dreamed of coach. Yeah, hallucinated. Did, like, did coach. Jeff Probst like lick a frog or something? Like when Homer Simpson gets addicted. Mm, to, that's like, true. Like, yeah, I would not be surprised if he like tr you know what it is. If, I mean, it made sense in uh, so in Vanuatu, there's something called like kava, which they drank in that season, which was like had hallucinogenic properties. I would not be surprised if Jeff accidentally indulged in that, hallucinated a contestant that would be appearing, what, 14 seasons after wait, the time frame? Wait, wait, wait. What if this was not a hallucination, but Coach was astral projecting and Ooh. actually was there in spirit talking to him? It's entirely possible. I, I love that theory. I love that mm -hmm. theory because I love Coach attempting to do this. I think it, I think though it's like this version of Coach. Like I think Coach has lost Survivor three times, sort of like the Jimmy T. Malcolm mm. thing, right? It's like, yeah. all right, I got to figure out a way to do this. What if I somehow go back in time and like talk to Jeff Probst directly as to what to do? And I think okay. Jeff took everything the wrong way and said, mm. "This is my alter ego, not a contestant trying to you know parlay a fourth opportunity on the show." Is Survivor Guy the one who told Jeff that we like Survivor to be more dangerous? 
it sounds like this dude yeah fucks for lack of a better term right like he's someone who's <laughs> like uh yeah make it more dangerous make it more dirty <laughs> Yeah, I, I know right now if i'm seeing someone <laughs> with odd tattoos wearing animal furs with really long hair uh i actually don't think that guy fucks <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, he continues, uh, and Jeff says, then as the sun began to rise, he said- Wait, this was at night? (laughs) Okay, as the sun began to rise. So I guess the six hours was overnight. So he saw him, what, at like midnight? And then six hours, and then the sun began to rise? I don't know. Anyway, then the sun began to rise. He said, I must go. I'm needed somewhere else. And he started to walk away and began a slow run. And finally leaped up as though he were to fly away, kind of like a bird. But instead, he only got about six inches off the ground, stumbled a bit, and then kept walking, finally disappearing into the jungle. Oh, that's coach. That's also very coach, right? Like, oh, I'm going to turn a bird stick. now. Yeah. Oh my God. Jeff Probst is not okay. Okay, well, to this day, Survivor Guy remains my spirit. My survivor spirit animal. So I'm just saying. He's not an animal. He's a man. But, well, yeah. Well, and no. that's also like, why are you saying it's 2021? Why are you saying spirit animal? Like, sh- well, stop it, Jeff. I mean, first of all, survivor guy, which I think. Oh, that's true. Choices, Jeff. That's interesting. Really? Yeah, like, just call him survivor. Okay. Well, I mean, nobody nobody said you can't say guys ever. Uh, like, that's not... Hard I, said. I don't know. I've been reading comments. Apparently, yeah. well, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> that's... That's it. I don't... That's... That, but, like, it's not like it was like, okay, guys is over forever. It was just maybe when you're referring to a group of people of any number of genders, maybe don't use a gendered greeting. And then everyone is like, oh, my God, Survivor is ruined. We can, ne- I will stop watching this show. Yeah. The let's, number of let's, people. Let's, let's, yeah. Like, cause I had a tweet on Wednesday where I was just like, oh my God, Jeff Probst said at me, I won't read it anyways. And I, it was just like totally inane. What a stupid tweet. But it got traction. And the c- replies to that tweet are a l- hellscape of it's people. Weird. I, like, I, it's so weird. I, it had the same thing, a similar thing happened to me where like it, Nate, like it was no reference to the show, but people were tweeting me as if I was the show for whatever reason. They're what? like, not watching again after like I hope Ricard goes next. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm I'm not at Survivor CBS. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I am not well, the like, show. Oh, this I'm already happened. Like, they do know that it was already like filmed and in the can. Like, they can't affect the show to make sure Ricard goes next. I also think my personal theory on this, which I haven't had the opportunity to talk about, is the way Ricard brought it up as, like, I was supposed to say this, but I did it in the moment. I'm sure that this is something that was brought up in the casting process with Ricard, maybe where he mentioned like, oh, and I I don't think it's appropriate when Jeff says, come on in guys. And so I think that it's something that had been discussed before and Ricard was supposed to say, no, don't do that. And then was just like, on the first day playing a game for a million dollars with the whole cast and crew there, maybe didn't want to say it in that moment. I forgot my line. Right? But, and that, well, that's the thing. So like, like let, let me say in response to, to all like the, the Michigas out there, I don't think anyone feels like this was a good execution of this. Like, I think feel whatever you want to. I think it was the weakest part of the premiere. I think it was like incredibly sloppily done. I think to your point, Kirsten, it is abundantly clear to me. The show wanted to get rid of it, that Mm -hmm. they were talking about it Mm -hmm. behind the scenes. They're like, yeah, we should probably get rid of this new era. Like, let's be more inclusive. But they wanted to make a TV moment out of it. They wanted someone to stand up and be like, let's get rid of it. And Jeff be like, Thank you for doing that. Thank you for stepping up. It takes a lot to risk yourself in this game. So we're going to get rid of it. Day one. Good guy, survivor guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Day one, it doesn't happen because surprise, surprise, uh, if you're in a powerful position and you ask a bunch of powerless people who don't want to step up and say something to not put the spotlight on themselves in a game where that's the entire you know, modus operandi, when they don't do it, of course it blows up in your face. And so I completely think... That over the next couple days, like, Ricard either brought something up in the casting process or he's, like, brought something up in confessional. The producers are like, yeah, you should probably, you you can bring that up to Jeff at the challenge if you want to. Because basically they're like, shit, we thought we were going to have this big performative woke TV moment. It didn't happen. It was something we wanted to do. Let's do it. Because 
the fact of the matter is best execution was he just gets rid of it behind the scenes just says yeah. come on in yeah looking yeah. down yeah. and nobody and yeah. nobody focuses on it that, i mean that's what happened mm-hmm. with drag race right so the drag race line was gentlemen start your engines may the best woman win but now with the trans and non-binary contestants participating it was racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win and it just happened and no one i mean there were people who noticed applauded whatever and then there were people who had no idea it was just it wasn't performative and i think that was kind of like the biggest issue that i had and then you ended up making both sides upset like you have the people that are like oh, I can't believe they're gonna change it and then you have the people that are like okay performative like you know wokeism that you were just trying to show and off that you do it like just do it well and it's like it's you've, h- we've seen over the years where Jeff has been a big fan of changes to the structure of the game that tend to make it harder for women to win and so you would think that maybe those oh, would be gender this- issues with the show. <laughs> okay, sorry, Maggie. I, I want to give you the chance, but no, I just no. uh, just uh, quickly on that they it was at tribe. So do you guys remember that there was the comment that was made about how at tribal council the women are always in the front, the men are always in the back, and that yes. puts a certain person. They changed where people were sitting and like oh, where the women did. and men yeah. were sitting. Yeah, they didn't just put all the men in the back. I don't think if I remember correctly. No, because I remember I remember uh, at the like the Liana's Ula in the back council. I think. Yeah, it was like it was like Ricard, Shan, and Brad were in the back. So like. They 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 changed it up a little bit to make sure because usually they do it by height. So the tall people, which are usually men, are sitting in the back. The women right. are sitting in the front. So when people mm. whisper behind your back, you wouldn't typically notice yeah, that. It, so I'm glad they just, I'm glad they did that. It may just be that Shan is very tall, and that was like kind of how it worked out. But uh, like that's the type of change that's like you just implement it, and then that helps the structural issues mm. instead of being like, hey, guess what we did anyway i'm sure survivor guy told him to do it so like yeah, what survivor anyway, guy sorry, says sorry goes. for derailing um jeff's no thing, no but no, Maggie also had say. something to say no i was just gonna say that you know i think that this is just like an example of how like i think jeff really thought like when he was like at me on twitter i won't read it he was like i'm the person doing the changing like at me like whatever but when you put ricard and that like sort of sacrificial lamb place where like we understand like somebody who has a a broader understanding is like well he has a trans husband like of course he's going to be more in tune with things like this but like the the audience that doesn't agree with it like of course they're not going to at jeff probst of course they're going to at ricard and send all of this fuel to ricard and i was actually really shocked online to see that like it extended past just like you know the icon list Twitter people like that there were people who have like female big brother contestants as their little icon who are like screw you Ricard like going after him and I was like whoa like I thought that we are all here on the same page like what is going like I was like what is happening with well, like, the I Twitter think Ricard community is getting death threats about this yeah, I don't no, I, I, I was I know, honestly like, listen, my my heart goes out to him because like he has also been too. taking this fully in stride like I, Cause I could see on the one hand, you'd be like, screw you show. Like you foisted this upon me. You made yes. me now the envoy to have to say this. Uh-huh. But he's like, F off. I, this is what I wanted to do. So I'm glad that at least from that perspective, again, as much as the show shouldn't, it's not, it's not the same situation, obviously as what happened in season 39, but it's another example of how the show shouldn't make it up to the players to decide like mm-hmm. when to yeah. vocalize something. Like you should have that cognizance as, as a company, yeah. as, as totally the bosses. Agreed to like say not to say hey employees step up you know if you feel this way like you should observe those behaviors i guess you know ricard is is taking it all in stride which i really admire because yeah it's it's tough and also i don't know i'm sure people these types of people aren't listening to the show but those that are like you know as a as a christian to to watch this happen it's like okay as a christian uh, i'm sure you loved when two women got naked for chocolate and peanut butter or when there was an entire season of like a religious cult essentially formed and the one person that won was the atheist or all those scenes of people being mocked for their faith. Like I'm sure you love sticking around for that. And that for some reason, the eradication of one word has now caused you to completely leave the fandom altogether. Well, but, and also like even moving past that saying, come in guys, come in everybody, come in. That's not actually a a religious issue at all. Uh, Like that, 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 that's not an issue of faith. Uh, I mean, I preferred come out, come on in, losers. Um, oh, like, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Picard. We're going actually, shopping. 
Yeah, yeah, get in. Exactly, yeah, get, get in, in losers. losers. We're going, going to an immunity, immunity challenge. challenge. <laughs> Hal Picard of the great uh, challenge where Hap have actually wrote in a few suggestions for me based on pop culture properties, such as mm. uh, Come On In, Cool Cats and Kittens. Oh, that's Tiger a good one. Uh-huh. Uh, how about Come On In, early quarantine. Come On In, You Filthy Animals. Uh, yeah, that's love that one. Animals. Love that yeah. one. Uh, there's also mm-hmm. Come On In, Rebel Scum from Star Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, come on in, survivors. Like, if you want to, you know, maybe stay a little bit more <laughs> in line with the show. What about come even on come on in, y'all? Let's throw in some southern, I know that's, some I, southern I, flavor. I would love come on I in, like y'all. To say Look come down. on in, y'all. Yeah. I don't know. Survivor guy didn't tell him. So that's really where we are, which by the way, the, it continues. All right. So we'll just finish the last little bit here because it actually does have to do with some uh, incredibly memorable lines. So, so Jeff continues, survivor guy guides me, survivor guy informs me, survivor guy literally gives me the questions at tribal council. Oh, oh. (laughs) survivor guy also comes up with those incredibly memorable lines, like got nothing for you or worth playing for. He even gave me a couple of new quips for this season, including sorry for you. I'm still working on the delivery, but I'm confident it's a keeper. No, Jeff, the- <laughs> get that out of your vocabulary because that is the most passive aggressive BS I've heard. It's Jeff no, actually said sorry this. Sorry for you. Is, sorry for like, you. Is he uh, like, Jeff yes. okay? Look, like, is he okay? I, I don't know. War- I think quarantine did a little bit of a number on poor Probst. All right, well, let me just finish with this line. To this day, I don't know where he comes from or where he actually lives, but I'll tell you this. He's my superhero. I'd be lost without Survivor Guy. And scene. That is Jeff Probst's answer. The article is up. It's on EW. Uh, it, it's just look at what Dalton Ross published September 22nd. It's out there if you want to read it in the uh, in the flesh. So, Liana... I got nothing for you. I don't. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, sorry for you. I felt reading this. Oh my god! Yeah, it was after the Big Brother show. Rob was like, "Have you seen this?" I was like, "No." And I started reading. I was like, "Oh my god, what is this?" So I guess the question is, when is Jeff gonna use "sorry for you"? I don't know, but now I'm gonna look out for it. Like I'm so I'm... excited. This is my game within the game. It is when I find "sorry for you," which I don't even know under what content. Is it gonna be like when they lose a challenge? And he's gonna be like. Sorry for you. Yeah, I think it's my theory is that uh, it's going to be, you know, when you lose you have, and you had they had to give back the flint and they have to earn it mm. back. I think that maybe one tribe will have not yeah. earn it back for a long sorry stretch of you. time. And it's going to be like, Ooh. sorry for you. Yeah. And I do. I, I mean, I do feel sorry for them from that perspective. Like you are barely giving them a rug to pull, but you do. You give them like the barest carpet that goes yeah. in your bathroom. And then you're like, oh, bye. Give me the flint back. And you're like, all right, well. I don't know. I, I did see um, Harry from Australian Survivor say that it actually isn't that big of a deal because usually when they went off to challenges, they would like start a fire anyway and they would just use the embers to make the fire keep going. So mm. I would imagine after a certain point in time, they're just like, okay, if we have to give up the flint, then we'll just we'll Unless just do it's that raining really leave. bad. But then but their alter egos come maybe. out. Yeah, the alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> I, Survivor you know, guy. about the 26 day thing, like my feelings on my Survivor uh abilities are well documented which is that i would be terrible um i would want to quit immediately and i would be a monster to everybody around me because i would be starving and uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but um i do think that 26 days versus 39 days i could maybe want to quit way less because Mm -hmm. i would be able to tell myself like 26 days is very different than 39 days when you're starving and cold and miserable like it really is the less than Go a ahead. month versus more than a month. Mm. Like yes. that yeah. kind of thing, right? Because you're like, it's like, not even a month. I, I would be able to be like, you know, because I feel like you would really, really start to feel it like day five. And then I would be like, look, I'm already, I, I only have 20 days basically left. Mm-hmm. I, I can mm-hmm. do anything for 20 more days, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, and I do think that it would would make a huge difference to me if I was like, truly starving and it was raining and I was like, there's no end in sight, you know? Yeah, it's sh- like it's shorter than February. Like, yeah, yes, I love that Survivor colon shorter than February. <laughs> That's actually mm-hmm. the name of the season. They <laughs> they decided to take that out of the the theme and just go with Survivor Forty One. I love that. All right, so let's get into our next game here because yes. so we had this like 
prisoner's dilemma summit thing. Uh, I think some people pointed out it wasn't really a prisoner's dilemma, more like a hawk dove situation, right? Where it wasn't that, uh, you know, the best thing to do was, was to collude. But there was this idea of if everyone risked it, everyone turned that big old ship's wheel in a certain direction, they would cancel each other out. And for some reason, my warped brain took that idea and settled upon something we've never done on the B&B before. <gasps> We're going to play Survivor categories. <gasps> Yay! I'm so good at categories. You don't understand how good I am at categories. Like, I nail it every time. I'm so excited. I'm I'm scared. I'm scared for it being Survivor themed because that's, again, not my, like, strength in life, but I love categories. I'm here. I'm ready. All right. So here's how this is going to, write? to work. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to, whatever in instruments you want to bring in here, you have to see a pen on Survivor uh, or on the BNB &B as well. So basically how this works for those that might not be familiar with the game of categories, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the other three uh, a list of categories, uh, things that they need to fill in the blank for. Uh, an example from categories might be like things in your bathroom, uh, greetings, uh, you know, names of countries. Uh, and so what they need to do is I'm going to give them a letter and they're going to have a certain amount of time to hopefully fill out as many categories as possible with the letter that I provided. And again, these are going to be survivor themed. Uh, let's negotiate on time here. Let's do a little bit of Island of the Idols. How much time would you like? I'm going to start the, the bidding at a minute and a half. How many categories less? are there? There are eight. Eight categories in a minute and a half? We could do one fifteen. What? Like we could go lower, right? Wait, wait, wait. That, do we do one category at a time? No, it's it's going to be a minute and a half for all eight. Wow. In, I think in the actual game of categories, you get ninety seconds for twelve categories. So wow. Okay. All right. Then yeah. I'll, I'll get. We'll start. We'll start with trust? a minute and a half because I think we can do this a couple times. So okay. Like, okay. I think well, this I was going to say, I trust this this categories scary. expert here. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So yeah. a minute. And Are you going to roll the die of letters to let us know? Uh, exactly. I'm going to put it in the little volcano. Let's see. I'm going to. Is there a random? There's a random number generator. I wonder if there's a random letter generator. I think there is. Well, Let's you could see. just sure. put. 26 on, um, random letters and just put yeah oh yeah you could just do one to 26 and just all right all right all right here we go okay so i'm going to put the categories in the chat i'm going to describe these oh. to the people as uh oh thank god as, as they're uh as they're going along here I'm like a full notebook i'm stressed let's see uh, i'm so excited <laughs> it's like i was born for this I was bred for this. I okay. Guess I need to post comments. Uh, all right. I'm going this to. This is my favorite game. Well, you would, I think you would have to put it in the chat <laughs> more than then. Salad bowl. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So. <laughs> yes. Way you... more. All right. I'm going to send you. Oh, there's no ah! line breaks in there. Uh, hold on. I'm going to post I them. I think I can figure it out. I'm going to post them one at a time uh, in here. And oh what God. I'm going to okay, do is I'm going to talk to everybody as we're doing it. I, I haven't, I'll, I'll give you the timer once I uh, finish everything off here. We'll, we'll go a little bit easier on this first round because again, lots of new stuff being thrown your way. So again, it's gotta be something that fills this category beginning with the letter T. Now you can get creative with- The letter T? Uh, the letter T, T as in tiger. Okay. Uh, and so then what's going to happen is you're gonna fill them out. If you answer the same thing as someone else, you will cancel each other out. Uh, and there's also, I think, a little bit of debate if we feel like that's a BS thing that you put in there. You can get creative. We might give you a leeway for that. You have your eight categories. You have a minute and a half. Your time starts now. And I'm going to describe the categories to everybody as uh, everyone else is filling out their Wait, what was the letter? T. T. T as in tiger. Okay. So the first one is going to be survivor contestants. Any survivor contestant who begins with the letter T. Now let's remember, if you give the same answer as someone else, it cancels each other out. So that's going to be another fun addition to this game. Again, that's where the prisoner's dilemma thing comes in. The second category, reasons you might vote someone out of the tribe. Now again, this is where we get creative. So we shall see the reasons that these people come up with. They're very creative forces. Uh, number three, rewards. Uh, a reward that you might find on Survivor that begins with the letter T. Number four, uh, any medical conditions that could cause you to get medevaced. Uh, and your time is halfway up, by the way. You're at 45 seconds. Oh my God. <laughs> medical conditions what? that could cause you to get medevaced from the game. The fifth category, Survivor challenges. Now this could be a name of the challenge. This could be like describing 
a challenge. I'll give you a little leeway there. 30 seconds. Uh, uh. Number six, either a loved one or a moment involving loved ones on Survivor. Number seven, an object you might find at a Survivor camp, I guess with the exception of Survivor 41, because they're not given anything. Uh, and then the final category that has to begin with the letter T, a reason that someone would vote for a person to be the title of Soul Survivor. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, <laughs> five, four, three, two, drop the four, keep the one, and stop. Okay, this is literally impossible. Uh, I have only like four things written down total. All right, well, I, have seven. I missed two. All right, I don't, I have, I don't have something for everything. I have that's three. Okay. I have that's, four. That's what category is about. That's okay. Oh. And it okay. still might be okay because like if stuff is canceled out, like it's oh my fine. God. All right. So okay. again, your letter was T. So let's start with the first category. And if you didn't have one, you can just like say pass. But let's start with Liana, survivor contestant that starts with the letter T. Okay, add Tyson and Tony. All right, so yeah, Tyson and Tony. Did Tyson anyone else Tony. have Tyson and Tony? No, I did not put Tyson or Tony. Okay, so Liana, that is two points for you. You can put multiple? No, that's not how categories work. She gets one you point. You can only do one. Oh, All right. man. All right, well, Liana, Stop sorry. It. You got outvoted. <laughs> Kirsten, do you have any survivor contestants that start with T? I wrote Tina Wesson. Tina Wesson, all right, fantastic. That does begin with T. Maggie? I wrote Troy Zan. Amazing. Oh, yes. Maggie. <laughs> it starts with a T. It was top of mind, you know? All right. A reason you might vote someone out. Maggie, let's start with you. I said they talk too much. Talk too much. Oh, I like good. that. I like that. Kirsten, what about you? Do I get Do I get an extra point for the alliteration no, of talk we... too? Stop it. No, we didn't give... It's. Oh, wait, no. Does that a rule in categories? You Sometimes you do get... I don't know. I think we're good at this I don't point think it there's, is. There's okay. such few times... You, like, there's nobody named like uh, Tippy Toes Tony that would get <laughs> you know, three points for that. Uh, all right, Kirsten, a reason you might vote um, someone out beginning with the letter T. I wrote terrible attitude. Oh, I like that. Okay, oh, that's a good that's one. Good. Liana? Uh, tying knots poorly. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'll give that to you. I'll That's like that fumbling a challenge. I get it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, listen, uh, maybe you might say like, uh, you know, like tying knots, unbuckling a boat from the anchor. Same thing, right? Yeah. It's the same, same concept. Yeah. yeah. That was ridiculous, by the way. I can't believe that they were paddling an anchor the entire time. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> like, wouldn't Crazy. you recognize, like, why are we not moving at some point? But, but maybe I, they're I, just, like, like in the we're moment. really bad. And maybe they're just, like, oh, yeah. we're bad at this. Yeah, like, I've never paddled yeah, a that's, I think before, it was the so adrenaline no a little bit of, like, we're Survivor newbies. We don't know what we're doing, lols. Yeah. Lulz. All right, Kirsten, a reward that begins with the letter T. Um, trip to a village. Ooh, trip to a village. Okay. That happens. Liana? Uh, tofu? <laughs> <laughs> have they ever won tofu ever? I don't know. <laughs> well, they had veggie burgers for Angelina. Yeah. I guess that I kid up with tofu. And tofu. <laughs> I'll give it to Liana. I'm going to give Yay. it to Liana. We'll be generous in this first game. All right, Maggie, what about you? Unfortunately, I did the same thing as Kirsten and I said a trip. No! But I said a trip to the jellyfish, like place where they go to in survivor guatemala hmm. but i i think that it's trip trip. Is the, i think it's the same yeah I'll, well, I'll be generous this time but i think yeah i think for future games i think that's what we're uh we're sort of thinking the idea of like they're both trips so i think theoretically they cancel each other out even though they have the same the different destinations okay a medical condition that could cause you to get medevac liana Ooh. that begins with t i said nothing <laughs> okay kirsten i wrote too much beef Okay, oh. there we go. Too much beef. <laughs> oh, no. The old Joe, Joe Del Campo. <laughs> Maggie, what about you? I said tetanus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was. You can't stay. <laughs> you can't stay. I'm sorry. You have tetanus. You, you should have touched that rusty metal on the boat. Now you have tetanus. Oh, my God. All right. Kirsten, a survivor challenge that begins with T. The, I, I panicked. I blanked on this one. All right, Maggie, do you have one? Okay, so I didn't get it within the time, but I have one now, which does not count. It? So I'll wait until yeah. Liana goes, and then I'll give you my answer. All right, Liana, what'd you write? Tying knots. <laughs> <laughs> 
But here's the thing, Liana. I thought of that as an answer after the time, but and I didn't write it down. So I mean, I'm, I'm going to give Liana yeah, the point, I, though. Because, it's not, I think that's a good one. There, there was a challenge in Survivor Palau, remember, as yeah. we remember mm-hmm. from the great James Miller, come on, where of they course. had to tie the knots. That was the end of the Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Maggie, what was the one you had posthumously? Transfer water. You know, like you transfer oh, there water. Oh, yeah. yeah. there we go. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, triangle yeah. counting. Oh, uh, try. Wow, I feel like this is all idiot. There was two specific. in this episode. Oh, <laughs> this is a real oh. tea filled episode. Uh, all right. Loved ones or a moment featuring loved ones, Maggie. I don't Nothing. have anything. Did anybody? All I could think anything? is she died, dude. And that doesn't I have a T in it. <laughs> I, I wrote touching probes comparisons because they'll be like oh what's the having a sister like <laughs> oh touching like okay. like not touching like, not oh, touching his shoulder oh it could have just written head. touching because there's other touching at some of the loved ones visits. yeah I'll, I'll give it to kirsten like the idea of like oh it's a touching moment mm-hmm. all right liana an object found at a survivor camp beginning with the letter t a tiger <laughs> <laughs> you wrote <laughs> I, I thought maybe there could be something in like some caveat where you would give it to me. Like there was a tiger statue or something somewhere. <laughs> no. I, I'm sorry. I don't think any of the big five animals <laughs> want the survivor camp. I know it's the most dangerous season ever. Maybe we'll see a tiger get loosed oh upon the contestants. Maggie, what did you write? I have tarp. There we go. Tarp. Kirsten, oh, okay. did, you write, did you write good. tarp as well? Um, I wrote uh, Tinder, like to make fire with. Like, okay. Well, that counts. I think or so. the app. It's going down. I am yelling Tinder. Go Kirsten. <laughs> All right. Final category for this round. A reason some would vote for a person to win the title of sole survivor, Kirsten. Uh, total domination. Ooh. Total okay. domination. I love that's like a Mortal Kombat call. Yeah. Maggie. Mm-hmm. I said they talked their way into it. Okay, oh, yeah. all right. In the and, final and tribal. Liana. Tying knots well. <laughs> <laughs> I love this idea. Here's a, but here's the thing. Who are we to say why anyone cast their vote? Yeah, I exactly. mean, I would give her the point. Like, I'll, I'll give her the point. I love this idea of like this Boy Scout comes in like, listen, all I know how to do is tie knots well, and survive. Well, but Lil didn't win, so. That's true. Oh, but maybe that's what Lil should have done. She really should have scared of like, well, I can tie knots. I can tie knots. I can tie so many knots. All right. So at the end of the first round, you actually all did pretty well for yourself. I did great a little bit on a, on a curve, but we have Liana in third with five. <laughs> Maggie has That's six and Kirsten has seven. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So we're going into round number two. Do you want okay. to color come time? Yeah. Do you want more time? A little more time, probably. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to give you two minutes this time. Okay. Oh, wow. A lot of time. Okay. 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 There's eight categories. There are eight categories. Uh, let's come up with another letter here. Can, oh, can I get ahead. a visual signal, Mike? Cause I muted you guys so I could focus. I have sure. to be quiet right. what I'm thinking. So your letter <laughs> That's a good is going to be. Just starting from the top of the alphabet, we're going to do it with the letter A. All right. A is your letter. We're going to go with two minutes, three, Wait, two. wait, wait. Is, is it the same, the same category? Questions? Same category, <gasps> yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, and go. Two minutes are on the clock. Yeah, so I'll talk to everybody a little bit here because uh, actually at the time that we're talking about this, I watched all the secret scenes, which are up on CBS.com. Uh, I recommend you check them out each and every week. It provides fun little nuggets. I know that we're a little uh, short in, in them, specifically in this episode, probably because it was two hours and there was a lot of stuff in there. But there was something I noticed uh, from an aesthetic choice. Now, obviously, there was a lot of really great aesthetic choices made, as Liana talked about, in the realms of cinematography. One minute, 30 seconds left uh, of, you know, everything from the the at-home videos to even some of, like, the slow-mo shots. Very Australian Survivor, which is awesome. Australian Survivor is epic. But one thing I need to talk about is the tree mail. Uh, So this was taken. There were two tree mail scenes, one at Luvu, one at Ua. And there was a shot of them going to tree mail. And I had two different reactions. Because the first thing I saw was something that, to be honest, looked like a, a mailbox on the island. One minute left. You are halfway through your time. Yeah, it looked like a mailbox, right? It was like a, a, a big st- st- uh, stationary structure with like a curved top. Like I thought Virginia was going to deliver a letter to Santa, probably to drive, draw some slips out of a sack. Uh, and so I'm like, oh, okay, we actually went with a literal mailbox for this okay survivor i guess we're we are really going in that meta spirit and probably the most meta episode of the show yet and then they open up a door 
in on the side of it, and it's not a mailbox at all. Thirty seconds left. Uh, it's like a cubby hole, like something you might experience in first grade, where there are various little like holes in it that you would store things. I don't know why they need that many holes. Frankly, I saw at least fifteen holes. Peter Harkey maybe wants as many holes, but I don't want that many holes. And there was a little scroll in there. So now we have a tree mail that is a mailbox on the outside and cubbies on the inside. I have no idea what this aesthetic choice is, but it's fantastic. I'll give you 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, keep the four, drop the one, and stop. You were like coming in and out of my brain, and I came yeah. back in with the holes part, and I was like, what the hell is Just Mike watch the watch the secret about? scene at Tree Mail after oh you're all listening God. to this, and you will see the Tree Mail for this season. It's it's a weird design. Uh, okay. All right, so let's, let's get into this. It's anybody's game at this point. So round number two here, a Survivor contestant, Liana, who begins with the letter A. All right, I said Aris. Aris. Okay, Kirsten. I said uh, Allie from Heroes, Healers, Hustlers. All right. A little bit of an odd choice, but okay. I don't know and why she was top of mind for gotta me. Gotta go unique, though. That's good. And Maggie? I said Abby Maria, my queen. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. That's a good one. I think if we were doing Family Feud, I would imagine Abby Maria is probably... I would say I would say her and Angelina were probably the top two, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, but right. categories you don't want the top two. I know. I just think it's interesting that again, it's like that idea, right? Of uh, it's that again that prisoner's dilemma thing of like, well, if they're gonna pick this, then I have to pick this. All right, or Kristen. Adam too. I think Adam would. Be oh yeah, Adam would be another oh, yeah. good one. Uh, a reason you might vote someone out that begins with the letter A. Uh, All girls alliance. Oh, okay. <laughs> a very unfounded yet. Completely realistic reason. Someone but it could be a survivor. the reason could also be because you're in an all-girls alliance. Mm. All right, Maggie, what about you? Um, I said because you're angry with them. Angry with them. <laughs> all right, anger. And Liana, what does this have to do with tying knots? I wrote arson. <laughs> like Butch. That's an incredible like, reason to vote <laughs> someone out, considering it's a crime. I don't uh, think that was technically arson, Liana. <laughs> Well, premeditated or not. Call it he didn't arson. have the... <laughs> uh, there was arson. no mens reus. He didn't have the... It still starts with A. <laughs> I'll give it to Liana, because I love... I mean, I think you would technically vote someone out because that they burns. I mean, uh, I mean, if you count, like, uh, tossing rice in the fire, is that arson? Mm, uh, I don't think it would meet of the property. legal require. It would be mi- a mischief under in Canada. Mischief. <laughs> You're, that's too much mischief. Yeah, you'd be charged with mischief under 5,000. All right, Maggie, a reward that begins with the letter A. All right. I love her. Good old Karishma. I said Applebee's. Yes. Oh, okay. I almost did. I'm glad I didn't. All right. Liana, what'd you say? I just said good old fashioned apples. <laughs> apples? I think, that they've won, I think that they've won like an apple at one of the auctions. I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that true. And there, and there, and there have been yeah. some times like where they, I remember in, in the aforementioned Gabon, there was like a fruit challenge where they were yes. throwing yes. stuff around. So, yeah. Um, All right. I, Kirsten? I, I wrote uh, appetizers. Okay. At Applebee's. <laughs> appetizers. All right. Let's go with our next category medical conditions that could cause you to get medevac. Now, I think there is like a consensus number one here by <laughs> being intrigued, Liana. What did you say? <laughs> Arm cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would probably get it. I what happened? Would, Arm I cut think, off. I think you would be medically evacuated if there was an amputation. Yeah. You could have wrote amputation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing a lot of blood. Cut Arm off. cut off. <laughs> All right, Kirsten, what did you say? Uh, I said allergic reaction. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, Survivor uh, South Africa fans know that. And Maggie? I said an aneurysm. Oh my god! Oh my god! god. god. <laughs> this. Make it, 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 if you die, are you technically medically evacuated? I love that Kirsten is the one watching Grey's Anatomy and has the my, least no, medical diagnosis. My oh, nana had an aneurysm and survived. So I mean, you know. Michael, anaphylactic shock is it can be bad. Yeah, but mm. compared to aneurysm and arm cut off, I think it's like number three <laughs> out of three. I thought I thought the consensus would be appendicitis. 
Oh, mm. I've had appendicitis and I didn't even think of that. And I still well, have both Obviously, arms. you wouldn't have been medevaced because you were <sighs> so tough. You toughed That's it right, out. That's right. I survived exactly. through it. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, if you're Jeff Probst, uh, appendicitis is a quit. And if you're Kat, yeah. appendicitis is death. So mm. really, it's like on that spectrum here. <laughs> All right. Kirsten, a survivor challenge that begins with the letter A. Um, I wrote animal trivia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I've heard some animal trivia happen. Like, there's that thing of, like, uh, you know, if a lion attacks you, what should you do? They do ask about animals at times. All right, Maggie. I said archery. Okay. That yes, iconic all-stars yeah. with Jerry, right? Yeah, like an yeah. actual, like, challenge that people remember. Yeah, good job. Yeah. And Liana? Uh, a fire-making challenge. No, no. Oh, no. I, no, I, I, no, no. Uh-oh. No, I'm no screwed. articles. I don't okay. think it's interesting though. We went with A-N-T and you could be like the fire the making fire. challenge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All uh -oh. right. Next up, uh, let's go to Maggie here. A loved one or a loved one's moment that begins with A. Um, when Abby Maria's mom comes and she can't speak English. I love right. that moment. I love the specifics on that. Uh, Vera, I believe her name was. All right, Kirsten. Um, I wrote angry Colby bracket bad at challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. I, I love that you you and Leon are writing like the odd headline for the Survivor newspaper of like arm cut off, angry Colby, <laughs> bad at challenge. <laughs> All right, Liana, what'd you say? No, dude, no, no, this doesn't uh, a hug. No, stop <laughs> cheating. <laughs> okay, well, you're not gonna also, like my loved other ones answers. moment, a hug. Come on. A hug. Which a hug? hug? Who's hug? A, you know, hug? a hug. You know, a hug. <laughs> All right, Liana, <laughs> something you could find in a survivor camp. A tarp. No, I, I know. <laughs> I didn't understand the rules. She just stole Maggie's answer from uh, last time. I yeah, did. A tarp and you went with a tarp. All right, Maggie, what did you say? I said all the contestants. That's mm, pretty right, cheap. Camp. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's hey, pretty cheap. Hey, angry Colby? He was angry. I think I like that That's description more than all moment. the contestants. All right. Uh, Kirsten, what about you? Um, animals. <laughs> like the there are like scurry like cats. Uh, that one time that they tried to hunt, there's, there's been pigs. There were lions outside of the the camp. All right. What, what do we think? Should we give it to her lizards, here? I know this is, this is rats, a rigorous category. Snakes. I say no, but I uh, camp and made Jeff Probst dream up Survivor Man. I just I'm, think Survivor Guy would be okay with my answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of the running, my, so I'm points for everyone. As far as I'm, unfortunately, concerned. my cool alter ego has not uh, has has not you know come by to give you the points. All right, final one: a reason why someone would vote for a person to win Soul Survivor. Kirsten, beginning with A. Animated final tribal performance. All right. I like that. I like Wait, that. But, okay. I said an amazing final tribal speech. Is that different? That's different. different. Animated That's different. and amazing, amazing are different. Okay. Yeah, they some are. People do, some people don't like animation. All right. Maggie. I said you're you annoyed write? with the other person in the final two. Sometimes Absolutely. that happens. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So our final scores here. Getting the Great bronze. Job. Going to tribal council. There's only one mug to give out. Liana Boris with a score yes. of 10. Second place. It's a close one. We're neck and neck. Came down to the puzzle. But congratulations, Kirsten, by a score of 14 to 13. You are the yes. Survivor's Categories champion. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> Congra but congratulations to all three of you. Uh, we have never Isn't somehow- Isn't Scattergories so fun? I, mean, I love Scattergories. It's one of my it. favorite games. I love Scattergories. Somehow in like the four years that we've done this podcast, Liana, we have never done yeah. this. And it is so much how. fun. I'm just waiting for when you do- um, Pictionary. Yes. Could, I think, is, I, could you do survivor charades on the PMP? We could do something. I think I think there is room where we could do if we especially if we become a visual medium, I think we could do like a survivor version of Gardic Phone could be interesting be where fun. we do oh, like survivor theme suggestions could be an interesting thing to do for one game night. So we're just we're just building out the survivor game night that uh, even if when survivor goes off the air, we have all these other things to live on That's in their right. stead. If game night comes back to Renap, I'm making them play Gardic Phone. <laughs> uh, I, 
especially Akiva, given, uh, you know, if you know the way that he draws a giraffe, you know that his skills are legendary. So, yeah, so that's that's going to do it for, for the games on the BNB this week. Uh, I know that we have uh, instituted this when we did our Survivor rewatch in the past over the summer. So people who might not have checked that out don't know that now we end the podcast by uh, having our guests come on and highlight a cause or charity that they feel is very important to them. Of course, there's a lot going on in the world right now, not just in the world of Survivor, where there are advantages and twists aplenty, but the world is complicated as well. And so we want to give the time at the end of all this silliness and shenanigans to highlight something that we could actually do with our time and money rather than, than you know, participate in this nonsense. So Maggie, Kirsten, we had the two of you put your heads together here. Is there a charity or cause that you want to shout out this week on the BNB? Maggie and I are in complete agreement. I'll let her... Yeah, um, I wanted to talk about Planned Parenthood, especially given I know Kirsten is a Canadian, but um, I live in the United States and the Texas bill just went through um, and the Supreme Court upheld it, uh, which means that they consider a woman pregnant at six weeks, which is often before a woman even knows she is pregnant. Um, And because this is why, in case people didn't know, because when you miss your first period, that counts as four weeks that you are pregnant. Even though like like the first period that you miss, you are already four weeks pregnant. That's why most women at six weeks don't realize it. Um, so uh, we were in agreement to talk about Planned Parenthood that offers um, safe and affordable health care to women. And um, yeah, if you could check it out, donate some money. You know, um, they really are under attack right now in the United States. And um I think every uh, woman can understand the importance of uh, getting behind them right now. Amazing. So that's PlannedParenthood.org. Uh, there's a big blue donate button in the corner. Uh, the blue fun, as Jeff Probst would say. So feel, feel free to click on that. Make any donation if you can, or at least uh, volunteer if you want to as well. Obviously a very incredibly important cause. But I want to thank you both. For coming on here it was a big episode of survivor it was a big episode of the bnb had so much fun getting to break it all down with the two of you truly we are the filthy dirty fans who watch this show and get to participate in stuff like this yes the fil- the filthy dirty podcast thank you so much for having me i had so much fun me right, too so i had fun- the best time Amazing. Well, the pleasure is all ours. So let's let's go uh, around the horn here because we are have we all have so many irons in the fire. We're like Shan. We have so many different podcast alliances going on. So many suitors to court uh, that our votes determine where they're going. I'll start with you, Maggie. What do you have going on? And if people want to catch up, uh, hear all your opinions on social media, how can they follow you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at mlmorgan underscore. And um, right now, like Big Brother season is ending. Um, I was doing a lot of coverage for that, but it ends on Wednesday. And um, I have started to podcast about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City with Jacob Jones. Those come out Tuesday mornings. Uh, It's really fun and awesome. And if you don't watch the show, you can jump right in. And if you just listen to the first two podcasts that we did, the first podcast of the season, we really broke down what happened last season. So you'll be all caught up. Definitely worth the watch. This season, one of the women literally is arrested by the feds on camera um, for embezzling money from elderly people. So it's wild. You should really check it out. Like literally it it all goes down on camera. That's how the season opens with that like beginning sequence. So, and then, you know, we're going back now and and writing it out. So you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's me and Jacob Jones and yeah, we're having a ton of fun with it. So, uh, I'm intrigued. Do you think Jeff probe should be taking a page out of the housewives books and like introducing, or do you think contestants should introduce themselves? If we don't have any more of this, like at home footage, should contestants be like, you know, I'm a cattle rancher. So giddy up, you know, like trying. Yeah. They they need the taglines. Uh huh. They do. They need the taglines. Jacob Jones uh, has drafted me a couple taglines. So it's been really fun. A couple of listeners too have sent them in. So it's been great. Maybe if if, if anyone has any real housewives esque lines for the, the current survivor contestants, maybe that's something that they can utilize in future episodes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not too late. Yeah. Instead of like uh, as a neurosurgeon, right? Like make it a little different. Like uh, I cut to the bone. (laughs) <laughs> all right kirsten i cut how do you through have the bone on? oh hope not 
Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, if they're cutting cut through a, your skull to get yeah. to your brain, they kind of have to. Yeah, um, like arm cut off. Sorry, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy. Um, yeah, so you you're essentially a doctor. Honestly, yeah. You're one of the many doctors out there that Jeff's speaking to in that opening monologue. One of those dirty, filthy doctors (laughs) watching this show. Um, Yeah, so you can follow me at twitch.tv slash Kirsten said what, uh, where we're hanging out over there. Um, playing some among us with the crew along with other games and and activities uh and you can follow me everywhere at kirsten said what i have a weekly bojack horseman rewatch podcast bojack horse pod with Lindsay wilson which is uh we're just starting season four this week so great time to jump in on bojack uh and riverdale is riverdale is still <laughs> back so mary and i are talking about it every week just, just to to paint a picture, uh, Curse's cat crawled out from under her sheet like she like the cat was in a little spy shack and just <laughs> like, like yeah, under her she cat likes itself. to sleep really underneath. Cute the duvet between my weighted blanket and my duvet uh but i didn't know she was under there so just out of the like in the camera i just saw her like slide out <laughs> from there sorry yeah, that's like the, the b- beware aka banana advantage right like there's a shot of the fl- the cat flashing on screen like where is this damn cat i can't see it anywhere and you, yeah. it's right in front of your face the entire time you never know um the other thing too is and this isn't my plug but i just wanted to take this opportunity as well um what my great friend matt gig and maddie fresh he has just launched a gossip girl podcast the lonely boys podcast they're doing a full watch through of the original gossip girl uh maddie's a big fan and his friend has never watched it before and it's really fun and so i just wanted to plug that so people could check it out the first two episodes just dropped yesterday are they covering the revival as well eventually i don't know what their plan is but i Mm. said can i come on for the thanksgiving episode and they said yes so is there one Thanksgiving episode of Gossip oh, for, Girl? Well, I want the season one thing. Thanksgiving is actually like a big thing in Gossip Girl. There's like often Thanksgiving episodes, but the first uh, season's Thanksgiving episode is very iconic. So interesting. Uh, for some reason, Gossip Girl's like, we got, listen, it's all about family. So we have to, Thanksgiving is our one it's holiday. A family, to, it's a family uh, show. For us to hang Don't our hat on. Yeah. All right, Liana, as we, as we give thanks to all the podcasts that you're doing in the universe, what do you have going on? Well, first you can follow me on Twitter at Liana RHAP. I was on the recap of the recap to talk about Big Brother. Big Brother's almost over, but we had the recap of the recap there to push us through. So uh, that was super fun with Chappelle, Taryn, and Rob. And then I also uh, covered the beginning of The Masked Singer. So Puya and I are back. We talked about episodes one and two of the nightmare fuel that is The Masked Singer. Sorry, Mike, the big baby. Uh, yeah, so let me, let me just paint this other picture for people who might not know. <laughs> oh, uh, no. So I woke up. Friday morning, you know, cockadoodle do, rooster crows. I, I arouse myself from my slumber, uh, and I, I check and I say, "Oh, three messages from Puyo Zambakili. Oh, this is interesting. Let's see what he sent me." And I see three pictures of uh, the baby from this most recent season of The Mass Singer. Look, and let me tell you, I did not need coffee that morning because uh, if you were tracking like my heart rate, it was like a a spike, just a literal mountaintop Mount oh, Everest of like, oh my god. Uh, what is a- this that's a fantastic <laughs> yeah. question you know what that's my survivor guy if i get bearded and visited by a it's spirit guy it's gonna be this baby oh coming we're like ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and in that case i, I- don't think i'm coming back from it I don't like this. I wish I hadn't Googled this. Okay, the best part about it, too, was that it wasn't just the baby, but the backup dancers were human, were, like, adult babies. And no, I was like, oh, no, this is no. my... And I'm there sorry, were, I'm not watching like this show ever. There were, like, eight adult babies. Like, this is literally... Were they the that's singer? that's why I don't watch Masked Singer either, Mike. I'm too scared of the costumes. Yeah, I would. If I, was a, if I was a backup dancer and they told me to dress up like an adult baby, I would legitimately walk off the show yeah. I, I would say like listen i put my pride above certain things not a lot of things but certain things yeah. one of them being the potential of dressing up like an adult baby i'm sorry you'll have to find another desperate i person. listen i think in an alternate universe where you were a backup dancer who's getting a job on the masked singer you're just gonna you would put on the adult baby costume excuse you, you wouldn't are. be happy about it but you would do it for the cash about eight years ago, when JD was five years old, I played a hip hop dancer in a Wendy's commercial. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dancing's in my blood. Yeah, but like, it's not your main job. If you were a backup dancer, it would be different. You, If well, Wendy's had asked you to put on an adult baby costume to pop and lock and eat a chicken nugget, you would have done it. 
one of the other backup dancers series, they had these helmets with pool noodles on their head that very much look like dildos. So you can like pick or choose which backup dancer you want, Mike. Like, well, I would cause... much rather, and listen, if this is a would you rather, like, sorry, Big Jeff, I'd much rather wear a dildo on my head than dildo like an adult baby. <laughs> dildo yeah, I'm taking helmet. dildos over adult babies any day. Come yeah. on. Yeah, that's, that's an easy fair. choice, regardless of uh, the context. Kirsten spoiled the theme for Survivor 43. They brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, and then i don't know some other stuff uh, marisa and i finished lego masters uh mike you and i are gonna do the bbb and b wrapping that up next week when the oh, yeah. uh, season ends and uh, all that good stuff yeah we're pull we're double dipping next week we're gonna be doing yeah. uh the big brother and we're gonna be doing survivor bt dubs uh next week on the bnb we're bringing in uh, one of the survivor game masters himself jordan kalish is going to be coming on here he has told me offline that he has had quote, several ideas that he wasn't able to use on Twitch that he might bring here. So how many uh -oh. can we set an over under right now of how many times Jordan will say seeds, baby? You know, oh. his catchphrase from yeah. over a year ago. How many times will he Wait, say it? The catchphrase is over a year old. Oh, yeah. It's seeds, baby. A is, while ago. Yeah. Seeds, baby was like early pandemic. Uh, I see the wrinkles developing on my face. Oh, I feel yeah, J so like long. JD was like. <laughs> a teenager at I the mean, time. I know, baby. JD was like... He was literally a teenager at the time. JD, ah! like, all, those, all those pictures of JD dressed up like Carlton, like, that was when Jordan Kalish came up with Seeds Baby. Wow. So yeah, okay. we, we shall see about that. Of course, you can follow me at a Mike Bloom type. From a Survivor perspective, so I am doing Exit Press every week for Parade.com. Got to talk with Abraham and Sarah. Recommend you check those both out. Specifically, Sarah, uh, not only was she a great interview, I think she provided a lot of really interesting... Uh, perspective as to, I guess, what happened. According to her, the Brad vote wasn't at Tribal Council, but it was right before. So, like, there was still a lot of chaos going on. She gives her side of everything. So be sure to check that out. Also, from a Survivor perspective, uh, we finished our coverage of Survivor South Africa. Did three and a half hours on the finale with Shannon Gus. We did a three and a half hour deep dive with Chappies. I talked with the winner. Plenty more of that to come. As Liana mentioned, Big Brother is finishing up. I am doing exit interviews for that. If you saw what happened on Thursday night's episode of Big Brother, you want to read my exit interview. There is a lot in there. A lot in there. Like an entire anime series worth in there. So be sure to check all that out, as well as all the stuff going on on Poster Recaps with Lost and the Bloom Files. I'm also on the Circle Recap for this week, coming up in like an hour and a half from when, when we're recording this. When do you sleep? Oh, I never do. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Tippy Toes Tony. I'm walking around at all hours of the night just thinking on to making 904 guesses. Uh, and also, I am speaking of the circle, I did exit interviews with the final five. They're all coming out on Wednesday. So if you've been enjoying this season of the circle, I know I definitely have, and you want some perspective as to how it all ends, be sure to check all that out. Basically, I live on parade.com and in this room for the foreseeable future, but I wouldn't have it any other way. If you have any thoughts about the B&B, &B, as you have experienced in this very episode, we will play anything and everything. So please send us your game ideas, rhapbnb at gmail.com. That's rhapbnb, the letter B, the letter N, the letter B at gmail.com. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag rhapbnb. Seriously, we love the listener base that we have grown out there. You all are so creative. So like send us anything it, it's a it's going to be a shortened season but like a same number of weeks so we still have plenty of months to fill out in the calendar we'd love to hear some games for you so next week liana and i will be back with jordan kalish to break down episode two of survivor 41 after the premiere i'm really excited to see how this goes seems like a very fun cast seems like a really different way of doing things and i hope we continue down this really fun path that we've been on that doesn't make us as winded as those three that climbed that mountain Special thanks to Scott St. Pierre for editing everything behind the scenes. Thank you all so much for listening. Until next week, we'll check you out at your next day.